Welcome everybody. I think we have a full complement of commissioners. Welcome back to our first in-person commission meeting. I'm very excited. I wish there were more people here, but uh, it's not a bad start. So, Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Yes, Mayor. Mayor Burkett? I'm here. Vice Mayor Paul? Here. Commissioner Salazar? Here. Commissioner Castle? Present. Commissioner Velasquez? Here. Mayor, you have a quorum. Thank you very much. Chief, could you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? As I said earlier, tonight's our first actual meeting in person. So we're all gonna be a little rusty, I think. It's been a while since I did it. And I think it's new to some others. And we're gonna do the best we can. I think that it might be uh, helpful for us to go over a couple organizational sort of situational tasks that we you know normally go through in a normal meeting I think most of you know this but for anybody that's new I wanted to read it from the uh, code regarding decorum it says any person making impertinent or slanderous remarks or who becomes boisterous while addressing the town commission shall be warned if after the warning the behavior continues said person shall be barred from further appearance before the town commission by the presiding officer for the duration of the meeting unless permission to continue or again address the town commission is granted by a majority of the town commission now i want you to all be aware that this these particular regulations are on the agenda for tonight i have an item on here and we're going to address some of these rules and regulations but i'm just reading you what the existing rules are Heckling or verbal outbursts in support or opposition to a speaker or his or her remarks shall not be permitted. Signs or placards may be disallowed in the town commission chambers by the presiding officer. Persons exiting the town commission chambers shall do it quietly. With respect, getting the floor, improper references shall be avoided. Every member desiring to speak for any purpose shall address the presiding officer and upon recognition shall be confined to the question under debate, avoiding all personalities in indecorous language. Interruption. A member once recognized shall not be interrupted when speaking unless it is a call to order or as here and otherwise provided. If a member is called to order, a member shall cease speaking until the question of order is determined by the presiding officer. And if in order, the member shall be permitted to proceed. Any member may appeal to the town commission from the decision of the presiding officer upon a question of order when, without debate, the presiding officer shall submit to the town commission the question. Shall the decision of the chair be sustained and the town commission shall decide by a majority vote? So that, uh, and again, like I said, those rules are gonna be addressed tonight. I have some suggestions on, and I know the other commissioners probably have the same kinds of suggestions, so we're gonna address it. Also for tonight, even though I'm gonna recommend that we do away with this for tonight, we're gonna to be filling out cards. So if you all wanna speak, we're gonna do it the old way until the rules are changed. Thank you. Uh, commissioners, any additions, deletions, or linkages? Mr. Mayor? Yes. Um, I definitely do. Okay. Um, and most of my suggestions are just to kind of consolidate issues that are very similar into a similar, similar, conduct, um, similar discussion um, or similar issues into certain discussion points so that it can just be facilitated and we can move the agenda along because there are a lot of discussion items. Um, don't tell me I grabbed the wrong binder. Oh, I'm so busy. Um, but is there actually a copy, oh, here we go. Is there a copy of the discussion items available to me and I'll yeah. be able to wing it? Um, 
actually it's the discussion. Oh, here they are. Cool. Thank you. Um, so a lot of the so the items that are related to town manager reports, um, I was hoping that we could kind of roll them into the town manager um, report section, um, which is um, everything that has Andrew Hyatt town manager. So that's F and J, K, L, M, W. W, exactly. Um, so you see where I'm going here. Any others? So that way he can actually tell us what these reports are and we can move forward on them. Um, or I would be open to um, you know, them doing like short brief presentations where we have you know, like a, just really for, listen, for us to listen. Okay, well, so is, are you putting that in the form of a motion? Yes. I'm not, sorry, I can't, it's just hard to hear from down here. Oh, okay, are you, sorry. Are you trying to take them off of the discussion items? Yes, and, and move them forward into the town manager's report, even for next month, mm -hmm. so that way we can actually find out what these reports are and they can report to the group so we're informed on these items. Okay, because I actually wanted to move item L up, keep it in the agenda and move it up, the walking path in the street, so I would I'd okay, like to well keep let's, that. Okay, well, just hang on a second. So what, what we're doing is th th there's been a motion. Is there a second? to accept that, to move it up into the manager report. Is that for next month, you said? Um, yes, because then we would be able to actually learn about these things to because they're all relevant every month. Okay. And um, they've been kind of languishing as discussion all right. items. All right. Because I it's think sometimes hard for us to get to hey, them. Hang on, Commissioner Salzauer. Um, there's a motion. Is there a second? I have a question. Is there a second? No. There's no discussion yet. So if there's no, dis if there's no second, there's no discussion. Uh, I would just ask, um, Commissioner Castle, would you consider moving, I mean, I'm, I'm okay with moving them up, but uh, Commissioner Salzauer would like to uh, exclude L. Are you okay? I'll second it if you exclude L so that we can. Um, um, sure. Is that satisfactory, Commissioner Salzauer? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, okay. good. So then, then I second move. the motion. Thank then, you. All right, discussion. Anybody want to add to that? Yeah. Nelly? Okay, um, I just, I, I don't see the, the reason to do that. Um, I think it would be better if we have it like this visible um, and we just, I mean, we've been doing this for a year now of having them here and our agenda is getting smaller every day. So, I mean, we only have a couple of items on here today to discuss that are resolutions and things like that. And then we go on to the items that we've all put on here. So to me, I, I just, I just don't want them to get lost. Okay. Not saying that Andy's going to lose anything. <laughs> So I just want nothing to do with you, Andy. Just I just want to make sure that, that we get to them in the order because I've been waiting for my items to be heard as well. Um, and I think all these items that are here have been brought to the commission by each one of us. So, for example, what um, Eliana is talking about, the walkability, that was something that I brought to the table over a year ago, and then it kind of, we were going to vote on it, and then we were, whether it was green or it was a white line, and which one was the most money, and then we, we, we had more options. So, I mean, that's something that I definitely want to talk about tonight, um, if we get a chance to, and I definitely want to move that one forward. Um, but these, I, I, I would prefer to see them here, I mean, unless you bring me a different kind of format, and then we can vote on this next month. Okay, anybody else? Uh, All right, so there's a motion and a second. I had a, yeah, I'm confused, because I thought that what I would love is for the manager to just give us those updates. It's written in the agenda. I mean, he already wrote it up in there, but if he can you know, share it with us out loud, then the residents can hear what the results of it is. So I don't want to sort of bury it in a report that we just say, yeah, yeah, okay, because I think these are items that are important for the residents to know about. Like they, they want to know what the results of the um, you know, second floor of the community center, or they want to know what the walking path recommendation is. They want to know the kayak survey results. So. I, I kind of agree with Nelly. I, I'm, I like your idea to streamline it, but I think that doing them publicly, if we moved them up and had the manager just address them at the meeting on top, that's even more important. So that way everyone can know what his recommendations are and what the information is. So I would, I'd rather do it that way, but I do agree we need to get them addressed so that we can um, talk about it and move it forward. Very oh, hard to see oh, oh, okay. these yeah. glass okay. things, right? It's like so through so, the mayor. So, yeah. So hang on a second. So 
I think that uh, there's an agreement to move the stuff up and have the manager sort of go through it at the next meeting. Is that what you're proposing? Uh, yes. Okay, so and he would, that, that would be a long, hang, hang on a second, hang on a second. That would be a very long item at the beginning of the meeting. You're aware of that, right? Um, I am. I just think a lot of these are reports that we tasked him to report to us. Okay. And they're integrated a lot. And my, my actually next motion will be to consolidate the things that are related to transportation, um, which there are many of those. And because I mean, we have multiple agenda items of the same thing. But, but, but you know, we're just kind of the stacking thing. them in other places. But. I mean, go ahead. You wanted to say yeah, something. Yeah, I was saying, why don't we just have the town manager give us the update tonight on these items? It's not going to take him very long, okay. and then we can get them done and off the agenda. But that's not the motion. But is that is that what you want to? I'm fine with that too. I just think okay. that they're languishing and yeah. they're actually very relevant. So well, I'm fine. Okay. So I can alter my motion to hear from the town manager for an update on these reports. But um, I, I, you know, I would Did like you, to. You want to ask him if he's prepared to do that? Um, sure. Uh, Mr. Town Manager, are you prepared to, to tell us about these reports? Some, some of, can you hear me? Is it yeah. coming out? Some of them, yes. And some of them, it's a staff-related thing. Some of this was here before I got here, and so it being so far down, it's not a lot of time to prepare, so it might be better for me for the next meeting to get a more thorough response. Okay. I agree. I agree that it should be for the next meeting. Well, okay. I think some of them he's ready on. Like the, I mean, if we get to them as we're yeah. going through this meeting. Okay, guys, 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 there's a motion on the table. Motion maker, what, what's your preference? Sure, then? I will motion to have the town manager prepare it, how he'd like to prepare it for next okay. month. All right. And, um, and then we'll at least hear from these about these items That'll next be month. Fine. Is there a second to that? Second. Okay, very good. I so that, that, there's a motion and a second. Uh, Madam Clerk, please call the okay. question. Commissioner Salasauer? Uh, I'd rather have him just the ones he's prepared on tonight. Okay, I know you would, but yeah. we're That's voting right motion. now. I don't want to put everything off to next month. Okay, okay, we're, we're voting right now, so okay, you vote so no. It's a no because okay. I want to get That's it fine. to the forefront. Commissioner Castle? Yes. Commissioner Velasquez? I'm sorry, but I want to keep it the way it is, so my answer is no. no nothing pertinent. Vice Mayor Paul? Uh, no. Mayor Burkett? Well, yes. Marilyn, what's your fails? Okay, all right. Charles, anything else? Um, yes, I would like to consolidate the items that are related to transportation and safety issues, uh, of which there are quite a few, and even duplicates, um, which is uh, which is good to hear. Um, some of these we've identified the same thing. So um, the ones that are related to um, to safety and. Um, and tra traffic and transportation, including pedestrians, bicycles, and vehicles that are kind of immediate needs um, would be consolidating and moving up. Um, bingo, the, uh, the walking areas in the residential district, I had that tag, which you guys already indicated you'd like to, to move up. That? That's number L or letter L. Um, the the traffic control devices on 88th and Hawthorne, which is P. Um, do, what exactly would you want to do with those, Charles? Um, I would like to consolidate them so that we can have one comprehensive discussion about how to resolve these problems. And like put them into one discussion item. Some of them are even duplicate. Um, well, we got P. The motorized bikes on the hard pack is Y. The A double A install a lighted pedestrian controlled high visibility crosswalk on Harding and 90th, okay, which is also numbered II double I. Um, walking path in residential area JJ. Purchase um, no, actually one way automatic gate. And, mm, that's you know, but the notion is that whether it's a one way automatic gate or it's a speed bump or a traffic table, or a traffic light or an additional crosswalk that's secure. Um, to talk about one at a time to me is very challenging when there are, they're all tied together because what we want is increased walkability, increased bicycle safety, uh, increased, walk, increased walking and bicycling, um, as well as lower use of cars and safe use of cars and getting the, school, the kids to school safely. So I feel like these are talked about all over, all the, over the periphery, so I'd like to combine them and move them up. Okay, so we'll... Is there a motion I'll, to combine um, those items? Yeah, like I, to make a well, he just made the motion. Well, hang on a second. I know, but I, I want to be clear on the motion. So sure. the motion is to combine those items, which are P, 
Y, double A, double I, double J, and move them up to where, Charles? Um, and I would, in, I would include actually L in there too. Um, but well, L, we're going to be. You know what? Not L. I agree, Mr. Mayor, because okay. L is more of a big picture. Okay, the other ones are immediate. Okay. Um, and I think that we could move them up even um, to um, B, my item, parking and other traffic solutions in the business district. So you want to move them district. after B or before B? Um, let's do after B because I think B is going to be pretty quick. I All know. right. So but there's a motion. Hold on. Let me. Uh, hang on a second. Yeah. Hands closed. There's a motion on the table to move P, Y, double A, double I, double J, up to right after B. Is there a second to that motion? I second that, but I agree we should add EE to that. It yeah. fits with this. Um, what, what I really think would be a good idea because, you know, this, sometimes yes. when we move things up, it's like, it, you know, it, it'd be better if we're more prepared. I think if the manager can take all these discussion items and see which ones should Agreed. be consolidated. Because we, we were prepared tonight to address certain things. We expected certain things to come up. Right. And this and happens all the time when we move things up. That's right. I, 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 and Charles, maybe maybe this is where you load it for the next month. Sounds like a good plan. You know I what I mean? I was just going to say that. So, why don't, so maybe the motion is we'll put it right at after the last item we get to tonight. And then it's first on the list. Yep. Is, is the seconder agree with that? Yes. Okay. Yes. So that's what we'll do. All right, now, discussion on that motion? Yes, Nellie? Well, we just said that we would put it at the end, so that's really where I agree on well, that. Well, no, I think, I think that, that, that yeah, Charles are... said that we'll put it, yeah, we'll put it at the end of tonight. Right, it'll, so it'll be the yes. first item that we get to at the I next meeting. I completely agree on consol consolidating all these. All right, Madam Clerk, are you clear on those? Yes, so yes, you got the motion. Yes, Anybody else want to comment? <laughs> Okay, what about um, DD, the Harding Avenue parking? Wouldn't so that, that be that part would, of that? You, that would be a, a, a yes. I'd like to comment and oh. let me know that you want to comment. Um, yes, I'd like to comment. Go ahead. Uh, if you're t picking all the stuff that involves the, the traffic, wouldn't the Harding Avenue parking be part of that? Mr. Kessel? DD? Yes, Commissioner Salzhauer, and I appreciate your help. I apologize. I left my notes at home. All right, so, I, and, and, and so, so the Vice Mayor said EE too, right? Uh, yes, I mean, I mean, I think the idea here, and, and correct me if I leave something out, I think the idea is for the manager to go through all these discussion items and see which ones fit together and no. even prioritize them. That's not what the motion is. Though. Well, I'm asking, is that the um, idea? The, well, the motion is after discussion with the town staff and my trying to get a handle on these items. Um, so that's where it comes from. Uh, but the motion is to actually just take this action so we can have it on the agenda. Okay, so I think time. we have, we're clear on the motion and in addition to those items that I mentioned as part of the motion before are gonna be item DD and EE. Is there any more discussion on the motion? But oh. L stays on for tonight. What That's does? L. Well, L, the walkability. No, L, so L, is, L goes into that the goes manager's the report next no. month. No, 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 no. That tonight. one we're talking about today. Oh, did we carve that out? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. That one goes right after the resolutions, correct? Or after A? All right. Well, it's going to be a little tricky to try to keep the order, but okay. So L is not in that group. Uh, any other discussion? So what we're moving for, uh, for the manager to give us a report next month is B, P, Y, A, A, E, E, G, G, I, I, and J, J. Right. Correct? Yes. Without, okay. not L. Not L. Um, I had one other comment. Okay. The, I, I remember last month there was a, a, a manager report on buying land, and that seems to have dropped off the um, the agenda for this month, so I'd like that to be back. Okay, well, you'd have to address the motion maker. On that, so that the um, the manager can address that in the next meeting? Is that um, part of your motion? Yes, I, that, that certainly should be added back and addressed at the next meeting. Okay, so that's my very motion. good. All right, anybody else? Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Yes, Mayor. Commissioner Velasquez? Yes. Commissioner Salazar? Yes. Commissioner Castle? Yes. Vice Mayor Paul? Yes. Mayor Burkett? Yes. Mayor of the Motion Carriers? Thank you. Anything else, uh, Charles? Um, no, sir. Okay. I do have follow up to, um, to the prior um, items, but I think that the, the uh, current and, and, and active business has been moved to another part. Number eight, I think it used to be at the front. I'm sorry? No uh, the, the, it's line item eight, uh, unfinished business and new business, which 
I recall or at earlier agendas was somewhere in the top of the meeting, but seems to have gone down to number eight, to item eight. Okay, you Mayor, wanna make a motion to move that? Mayor, if I may address that? Yes. Um, unfinished business number, number eight, it's always been number eight per town code. It's actually our agenda is set on the town code. Okay. Okay, anything else, Charles? Um, it's just if I would, if it would be an appropriate time for me to, um, to motion for an action based on previous meetings um, and uh, action that I wanted to propose censuring. Um, I you mean, we are adding things. If, if you want to make a motion, you're welcome to make a motion right now. Um, I would like to make a motion that I, you know, I propose a, a censorship based on behavior of a couple past meetings. Uh, which I was prepared to discuss um, back last year. Um, and um, I, you guys can, can put it wherever it happens as long as it happens tonight. Well, would you like me to explain a little more? I, I, you're gonna make a motion that you want to engage in a discussion about a cens censure? Yes. Okay, and um, I mean, you, you probably could I do, do it now, you could, ask that on be, it. you could ask that it be done later. I mean, what's your, what's, what are you sure. asking the commission um, to do? So actually, I'm just making the motion to, um, to censure Commissioner Salzauer um, for her objectionable, uh, objectionable conduct, um, which is, this is at the next meeting of our commission following uh, one of the two objectionable con conduct incidents. Um, and I think that the, um, you know, it was, it was inappropriate um, and, um, and it's, it's not, um, you know, be, befitting of our town, which has integrity um, to, you know, personally, it doesn't offend me, use of, of what could be considered a finger, the bird, the, for the I mean, whatever, F off, <laughs> excuse my language if that offends anybody, um, but um, it's just not becoming of this town or this commission in spite of whether or not I agree with what the content is or isn't about of, the, of what's said, because there are other ways for us to express ourselves. Um, I actually believe that no publicity is bad publicity in a way, right? <laughs> because um, Surfside is in the news for other reasons as well. We have some residents that are in the news um, and things happen, you know? Um, but we know that in society today, unfortunately, the news that, um, that is printed and published and, and broadcast and travels globally isn't always the news that matters. Um, but this one does matter. and. Um, and it was distracting to the town, and um, and we got some bad press about it. So, um, you know, and it, so it's not about me, um, uh, you know, differing in any opinion. Like at that point, I don't even really listen to what's being said. It's just that we have better ways to express ourselves. Well, let's do this. Let's see if there's a second to have this discussion. Okay. I second that motion. All right. So there's a motion and a second. Is there some discussion? Charles, you want to continue, and then we'll open it up um, to the other commissioners. Sure. I, I mean, I do this just in support of the town and, and in support of of um, of the commit of the, my fellow commissioners and my my fellow you know member of the commission, but vice mayor, and the mayor. Um, I and myself, you know, because I deserve better. Um, <laughs> I, I I think I just deserve better company than that. Um, and I do listen, and um, I'm also against the muting. Um, you know. Be, uh, which, uh, you know, which has, you know, I think affected more people than Commissioner Sausauer, but the mayor is, is you know, is trying, and I've, I see in, in some efforts in trying to do a better job, and he's doing a great job so far tonight, um, but I think that it happening again last week really set us back, and time is limited, life is short, we've learned that during COVID, um, and, let, you know, I just don't want this to happen again. We only have so many months in our term even, and, um, and I know this might be unpopular. Commissioner Salzauer rightfully has a large constituency of residents that who matter and their thoughts and their opinions matter. But I've always been a straight shooter and I'm gonna do what I think is right and I think this is right. Okay, so we have a motion on the table for censure. There's a second discussion, commissioners. Yes, Commissioner yes. Salzauer. Yes, thank you. Um, I, I appreciate, Charles, that um, you would like to bring this incident to the attention. Um, and I think it is important that we address it because I think when we need to look at actions, we need to look at what caused those actions. And I, the Commissioner, first can I interrupt you to tell you that what we're gonna do is we're gonna 
We're going to start using the clock, okay? So go Where ahead. I can't see a clock from here. There's a green light. You'll, it's three minutes. It's three minutes? Yes. Okay, so we'll start it right now? Yes. Okay, so we can set that for three minutes. Um, I was elected to make sure that everything that happens up here is above board and that residents have genuine ability to contribute to the town government. And genuine ability means that they have three minutes to come up and talk about the issues that they want. And we have to sit here and listen to it. Our bedtime is not their problem. Us wanting to go home early, not their problem. They expect us to be honest with them all the time. The problem with the Zoom meetings and you having, and the mayor having control of the mute button is that only one side of an issue was constantly being pushed. And if anyone objected or, or had a difference of opinion, they were conveniently muted. And it wasn't just me. I wasn't the only one muted. There were probably about 10 different residents that were muted. There were other commissioners that were muted. I remember when, uh, when the vice mayor was muted. I remember, I think, um, Commissioner Velasquez was muted as well at one point. The muting is out of control. That's unacceptable. When you cut off somebody's voice, the only thing that they can do is express themselves with signals, hand gestures, whatever's available. I don't regret what I did at all. You can censure me to let cows come home, and I would do it again in a heartbeat because no one's going to sit up there and tell me and tell me that I don't have a right to say that the t residents were misled. When you had meeting after meeting and all you said was it was going to cost $60,000 to underground the power lines and that's all it's going to be and we have it in, on video and one of the residents made a whole compilation, you can watch it yourself, and then show up at a meeting to find out that it's going to cost $300,000 when no one approved that, that's unacceptable. And I'm going to speak up against that and I don't care if you mute me, I'm going to say it loud and clear and I'm going to say it again and again. And if you continue to mute me, I will continue to speak because it's not your place to decide when other commissioners can voice their opinions if they disagree with you. And it's not just about, it's not just about the undergrounding. Okay? There have been so many other areas this year, starting from last summer when you had your wanting to protect the evangelical Christians from imaginary persecution. I mean, it's just gone from there. That was where we parted ways ethically uh, and, and, and everything else. We've just gone downhill. And so you and I are not going to get along. This is, this is not going to be an amicable um, this is not an adequate divorce here, okay, but we have to get along for the sake of the kids when we have to see each other. We're going, I'm going to do what's best for the town, I'm going to do what's best for the residents, and I'm going to speak up, and I'm going to make sure that my voice is heard, regardless of whether you mute me. And when I have to flip you the bird, it's because you've given me no other choice. And that's not something that's okay. You don't get to decide when people can talk, when they're done talking, when they can talk. And you, by the way, have talked three times or four times more than anybody else. Everyone gets a minute, and then the mayor gets two minutes. And then someone gets a minute, then the mayor gets three minutes, and on and on and on. And one side of an issue is called disinformation, and that's not okay. You got residents to vote for something by deliberately, deliberately misleading them with information. That's what you did to get the outcome that you want. You do that at these meetings. It was easier for you on Zoom to bully people and to control the microphone. And I'm really glad that we're back in person because you can't do that anymore, and we're all free to speak, and the residents are here to talk. And everyone, as far as, as long as I'm up here, everyone gets their three minutes protected, whatever they say. Thank you. Yes. Yes, I'd like to, I'd like to comment. Uh, you know, this is our first in-person meeting. I, I didn't expect to start out this way. Uh, actually, Commissioner Kessel, when you had put to censure Commissioner Sazar, I did write a whole speech, but that never happened because you didn't show up at that meeting. I actually prepared a statement for, that I want to read as a resident, as vice mayor for good and welfare, and I'm, I'm prepared to read that right now. As elected officials, we are leaders and role models for our constituents. The importance of our behavior and actions extend beyond our personal lives as representatives of the town of Surfside and we are a, ref a reflection of our citizens and government. Mayor Burkett, you continually weaponize the Town Gazette with political attacks against elected officials who attempt to engage in healthy debate. Your written statements are examples of your definition of cancel culture. Your actions are not freedom of speech. They are reckless political attacks that spread bias, confusion, and create disharmony within the community instead of providing true insp inspirational leadership. Mr. Burkett, attacks other elected officials in the Town Gazette and other means of communication that tarnishes the office in which we were elected to serve on the Town Commission. The purpose of the Town Gazette is to provide information to residents regarding services offered, programs available, and town-sponsored events. In the past, important decisions by the Town Commission were represented in the, in the Gazette without prejudice to explain what was approved by majority vote. Instead, Mr. Burkett subjects residents and the general public to illusory truths that are mean-spirited with misinformation and inaccuracies that lack democratic objectivity. Mayor Burkett has the freedom to write his blogs as a private citizen. However, as mayor, 
He needs to be held to a higher standard of conduct. We all do. So uh, tonight I want to make a motion, which I know there's already a motion on the table, so I'll have to wait. But I would like to mo motion later to direct the town manager and town attorney to uphold and protect the integrity of the office in which we serve as elected officials. Um, for the town of Surfside and not allow double speak and political attacks disguised as town business to disseminate by the town, to be dissemin disseminated by the town in our publications. Exploitation of town resources and publications like the Gazette must cease and not be used for political gain. Thank you. Okay. Well, I want to thank you, Charles, for bringing that to the table. Because, yes, you have the right to speak at every meeting. However, embarrassing our town all over the place is not okay. And I don't know how you think that sticking your finger out, which means a bad word, can actually, you think that that's okay. It's not okay. It's embarrassed us all, and it's not right, okay? And in terms of the undergrounding of the power lines, it was very clear on the ballot that we were asking our residents whether they wanted to spend 16 to 18 million dollars on undergrounding the power lines in our town. We never said we're spending $60,000 for a report to find out how much the, the, the whole undergrounding was gonna cost. So that's not misleading at all, okay? And in all reality, I recall very correctly that you were the one who said that you didn't want to spend $60,000. And it was much cheaper to come on and put this on a ballot to find out whether our residents wanted it or not, which would only cost us $2,333 per ballot question, not an entire $60,000 and waste people's money without then finding out whether they wanted it or not. So that is misleading because that is not what was put on the ballot. And to residents can read, and they and they clearly voted for something that they knew that was gonna, what the cost was going to be. So to say that is incorrect, and um, and that's all I have to say. Okay. Um. Charles, thank you for bringing it up. Uh, a couple a couple issues. Uh, our residents' bedtime is our problem. One of the things that we got elected to do was end our meetings at 11 o'clock so our staff could go home in a reasonable hour, not at 2.30 in the morning, okay? Your, your opinion about that is, is, is interesting, but it's just one opinion. As you are very apt to say, it's 20% of this commission, so it doesn't direct or dictate. Um, you know, people were not muted in the audience or on this commission except for when they were interrupting, okay? So listen, it, it, okay, well, good. We have, we have, we have, we have, we have. Okay, listen, we have decorum here. Mr. Epstein. No, 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 guys, guys, listen. Listen, now, now the meeting, this is, the, we got three people that are gonna destroy the meeting, okay? Have some respect, okay? We're to, you guys will get a chance to talk, and then we'll get a chance to talk, okay? So. No, 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 no. Listen, 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 listen. Okay, so we have three people in the audience that are not being respectful of everybody else. Now, if you guys are not going to be respectful of everybody else, that's going to be a problem. Okay, so, I, you know, you weren't interrupting when Charles Kessel was talking. You weren't interrupting when Tina Paul was talking. You weren't interrupting when Commissioner Salzhauer was talking. You weren't interrupting when Commissioner Velasquez was talking, but now you're interrupting, okay? I don't interrupt you guys when you talk. Yes, you I'd appreciate it if you don't interrupt me when I talk, okay? You, three people, three people here that feel like they get interrupted all the time, right? Yeah. And you guys are consistent, okay? But again, I'd appreciate it if you didn't talk out loud and make outbursts like that. I read that thing at the beginning of the meeting. We're gonna have a productive meeting and a respectful meeting, okay? So here's my comment. Again, Mr. Epstein. Mr. Epstein, no, no, no. How long are you gonna talk? Yeah, again, I'm gonna begin talking when you stop interrupting. So how's a minute? Okay, 
Again, as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, you know, again, enough. Three people, the same three people. I think you should. That'll be good for everybody. Good. Okay. So let me get my thoughts again, and we'll start again. Thanks for coming. Ms. Salzauer, you know, the bedtime for our residents is our problem. We promised to have the meetings done at 11 o'clock. I that said was your bedtime, not the residents, your bedtime. Yeah. Again, you're interrupting. Because you're lying. Oh, Again, okay. you can't okay. lie about okay. something. Now, now, you see, this is, the, this is the thing that we cannot have. I can't have you. You see, when, when you're talking, nobody interrupts. So nobody you says you're lying. Okay, no, no, no. Yeah, that's how it works, lying. madam. That's how it works. One person talks, and then the other person talks. We don't interrupt. That's how, in a civilized, respectful meeting, it works. And that's how it's always worked. Thank you, okay? So let's try it again. The time of the meetings ending is our problem. It's my job as the presiding officer to make sure the meetings flow, to make sure everybody has a chance to talk, to make sure everybody's treated equally. Now, there are some people that have behaved badly, who have been interrupted, and have been asked to stay on topic, and have been asked not to insult, and they have been muted. Yes, they have, okay? But people who are getting up and doing their best to contribute to the meeting, commissioners that are doing their best to contribute to the meeting, elected officials who are trying to make progress and not insult people in the meetings are never muted. It's not my job, I don't care. I don't really care. I don't really care. My job is to make sure the meetings run and that's what I'm gonna do. So, Tina, the Gazette is, it, you know, listen, you and I have a difference of opinion. You believe that the commissioners ought not be able to speak their mind in the Gazette. And again, no, 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 don't, please don't interrupt. Okay, I didn't interrupt you, okay? I believe they should, okay? I know you don't like what I say. Typically what I do is I recount my interpretation of what happens at meetings. And yes, I'm not happy when certain votes go certain ways. And I make sure that all the residents know it, okay? Now, I've always said, if there's something in there specifically, and again, if there's something in what I say, right, good, specifically that you know is unfactual and not correct, we'll talk about it and I'll fix it, okay? So if that's the case, I'll go on the record and fix it. That's my commitment to you, okay? Because I'm not in the business of, of ruining my credibility. My credibility matters to me. You know, my family matters to me. My friends matter to me, and the residents matter to me. So, listen, I appreciate what you're doing here, Charles. Uh, I support it. I'm sorry that it has to, you know, it doesn't have to go that far. It, we don't have to get loud and insulting. We can disagree agreeably. We don't have to disagree disagreeably. Okay? I'm done. That's... That's it for me. Okay, we want to go around again? Um, I'd just like to comment since I'm the motion maker. Well, I'm going to let, we're going to go around again. The motion's been made, so we're discussing now. So you're up next. Go ahead. How about we do a one minute adjournment? Well, I'm sorry, uh, really quick. Uh, listen, I think this is important. Okay. I think that, you know, we, we, people want to know what we're going to do about this. I think we should let the residents Well, we will. We will. But let's go around one more time, and then we'll let the residents talk. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I am glad that, Mr. Mayor, you just said that you have muted other people, because you have. And, um, you know, you're, you, I think you're doing your best at the time, as is Commissioner Salzauer, and we all are. Um, we're not, none of us can be charged with not caring about this town and not being passionate, all right? We just express it in different ways. Um, I agree as a resident with what the, um, with what the Vice Mayor shared. Um, as a resident, I believe that her statement was, was right on. Um, as an elected official, I have other duties, I have other responsibilities, and that is to, to um, serve the town, to protect and to serve the town, and to be a steward. That was how I ran in my campaign. 
and um, I'm not as exciting as the other ones. I'm sorry, so nobody's applauding or whatever, but I'm just silently here trying to do what's right. Not silently, though, and um, quietly, I guess, gently. Um, there are different ways of speech. A silence can speak volumes, um, and um, you know, as can absence um, in, certain, in certain situations. Um, everyone here is passionate. I wish we were doing the, more of the town's business in a straightforward manner. I do think that some of your interpretations of reality of how things went down or were intended um, by certain commissioners or the vice mayor, for example, are incorrect um, as a resident um, and as, and as a, uh, but I haven't been afraid to share my thoughts on that in that I, you know, it just doesn't af affect me. Like if anyone speaks, we're in a culture where um, you know, we, we hear different versions of what the truth is, right? This is at the national level. So if we can't deal with it locally, you know, I, don't, I just deal with it, whether I ignore it or I don't read it. Um, and it, but it really triggers a lot of people still. And I understand that. It used to trigger me, right? I, I, I disconnected from national politics for a long time because it was just too much. It's too much of a waste of energy. So we come from different places. We have different experiences and perspectives. I respect that. And I do what I think is right at the time. And I don't have any qualms about that. Thanks. OK, next speaker. Yes. Vice so, Mayor, and uh, then we'll go to Eliana. So uh, Mayor, Mayor Burkett, you, said your you stated your job is to make sure everyone is treated equally. Right. Well, I don't think so. I, I, I speak, and I'm finished, or I ask a question, and you, you, I never speak for three minutes, ever. I mean, it's like I'm very brief with my comments, and I like to be able to speak again. Uh, we were all elected to serve the people, and by you limiting our speech, we don't do justice to our people. Because if I have another question, I don't get to ask it because you don't want to allow me to speak again. Commissioner Kessel has a different viewpoint because you don't time him. You don't, you know, you let him go on and speak. He asked, at the last meeting, I asked one question and I was not allowed a follow up. He asked over six or seven questions. I, I lost track, that's how many questions he was allowed to ask. So clearly, you treat us differently. We are not treated equally. We should be treated equally. And you stated your, it's not your business, uh, you're not in business of, I'm read my, of ruining your credibility. No, you're in business of ruining my credibility. You purposely make statements against me that are false. And I can go through it, but I'm not gonna waste the people's time. We're here to do the people's business, and you know, the truth one, will come out. One, one, one thing? Everything you wrote. Well, how about one? Right. Everything. How about one? How, how, about, how about you, how about you? Sure. Just, She's, okay, she's still okay. got time. I got a whole list. Two minutes. Yeah, because I never speak. Again, you're, you're not talking right now. You're uh, speaking okay. right and now. Okay, I've always been respectful with everyone I, I, here. I agree. I, Listen, okay. you are. But you limit my speech, you, even though I'm respectful. You still got two minutes. Yeah, I know, because I never speak the full three minutes. Uh, as, for, as far as the Gazette, first of all, you don't speak in the Gazette. You write in the Gazette. Um, secondly, uh, I'm not, it, it was a budget meeting. We were talking about cutting the budget, okay? It's not limiting anybody's speech. It's about what you write in the Gazette. It's not whether I agree or not agree. Is that the one thing? I'm, I'm talking still. No. See, you're interrupting me. No, I'm talking and you're- talking. No, you were talking. You were no, no, we're t I'm talking. Okay, go ahead. I waited, I waited till you finished. Go, go ahead. So um, it's not about limiting what we say to people. You can say whatever you want to people, but why are you discrediting me? Why are you twisting how a vote was? No. You are, no. you are, because we were talking how? about the budget. How? It was a budget meeting. And you wanted to uh, outsource, the, you wanted to stop outsourcing the Gazette and bring it in house. I happen to think it's a very good deal that we have for the Gazette. I like that. And I said, if you want to uh, cut the budget on the Gazette, you can cut those pages because those were added pages. We never had that before. You mean the pages where we're writing? Yes. Okay, I disagree so with that. That's, you, and that's fine, you can disagree, but, but you don't but, have to go and say that I'm trying to limit people's speech. But that's that's what not it what it's about, it, that's no. What it does. See, and you're, yes, well, I'm done, I'm done. Please, let's get to the people's business. This right. is very rude. Uh, well, listen, it's, it's not rude, it, we're just, we're talking now. Who's next, go ahead. I'd like to go next, okay. So I only have two copies of the Gazette with me. I have happen to have May's here, and I happen to have like October, or no, February's or something. But literally, as again, I work as an investigative journalist, so fact-checking is something I do. And you're fact-checking, you're lying. I, I don't even know where to get started. Like, your lips are moving, you're lying. That's how it usually works. And for you to sit here and that you don't want to ruin your reputation, you are the opposite of civilized, respectful. You publish such garbage on your website, on your blog, on Facebook, to town-wide emails, to residents. It's, it's the 
the vile negativity just doesn't stop, and it's all lies. And for example, here, let's just take May, the May issue, right? The May issue right here. Here it is, Officer Paul at Salzhauer led the charge and succeeded in halting the undergrounding of the power lines, refusing to authorize the cost of blah, blah, blah. So if you watch the meeting, because I know you were there for it, I pretty much sat there quiet the whole time, and Ms. Velasquez, your best friend, tore Paul Abbott a new one. Oh, she went absolutely nuts on him, okay? Which is probably why he resigned, but you don't want to make her look bad because you need her to vote on the things you want to vote for. So you always blame it on someone else. You're blaming it on me like I led some charge, which never happened, okay? So unless your faculties are impaired and maybe you shouldn't be mayor, that's not what happened. Don't interrupt me because I'm talking as long as that light is on. And then you can respond when it's your turn for your three minutes, okay? That's one example right here in this edition where you lie. And then you wrap it up with thanks to Nellie and Charles K for the thoughtful, responsible leadership. You know what that is? It's called sucking, kissing butt. Okay, so that you can get your two votes to do whatever you want. All right, but absolutely, we were all there, and everybody knows exactly who was very vocal, and rightfully so. And I actually respect Commissioner Velasquez tremendously for standing up and talking about the fact that, whoa, where's three hundred thousand dollars coming from when all we heard about before was sixty grand? You, she was one hundred percent right to bring that up, and one hundred percent right to react that way. But you didn't like the way the vote went, so what did you do? You care so much about our town staff that you called an emergency meeting the following week on the day that you thanked the, the court clerk for her service. Thank you, thank you. I on a night she should have had off. You called an emergency meeting because it couldn't wait one more week for you to get to spend $300,000 of the taxpayers' money, right, on something, on your own pet projects. You do this all the time. Here's another one. Here's, I happen to have an issue here from, I think this is February. Uh, again, another one. Oh, we led the charge to kill the aforementioned revolution. revolution. There's no char what? meaning of a charge here, again, in bold. You, you bold it up. Miss Salzhauer, spelled wrong, by the way, and Paul led the charge to kill the aforementioned resolution, which was this your $100,000 zoning code thing that you decided to embark on without consulting anybody, by the way. You spent $100,000 on a new zoning code with no authority, with nobody saying you could do that, all right? And you just decided. Now you said, you know what? I already spent the money, everybody. Now we have to have endless zoning meetings to push this thing through because let's not quit halfway, right? So you just start these things. It's these pet projects. May right? I withdraw the motion? Really? Okay. Um, anyway, to wrap it up, yeah, you're lying all over the place. So if we're going to censure me, let's censure you for lying to residents all day long, for muting residents, not just me. And by the way, you also, in writing to the entire town, wrote in an email, I've only censored Commissioner Salzar and her son, and her teenage son. And that's factually incorrect. So that's okay. a lie. Okay, look. Well, next well, next well. speaker. Anybody else? I, right. I just wanted to add no, one thing. You. Well, you already spoke. See? So, see? Well, see, well, you already spoke. Would you like to speak twice? How about Nellie go, gets to go now? She right? can speak. I, I just wanted to add right, one but, thing. But no, no. Yeah, but you interrupted me when no, I spoke. No, no, but that's you, fine. Listen, you had two minutes left. I asked you if you wanted to continue, and then you said no. I'm done. Because I was done arguing with you. I just I wanted to well, add Mr. one Mayor, thing I about the, the motion. Well, listen, we're we're running the meeting professionally. Go ahead, Nellie. Do you want to make a comment before I open it up to public comment? I just think that we need to move forward and move on to this agenda and get this business done. I mean, this is a waste of time. We all know what Ileana did and how she comes up with different stories and I don't know whatever she tells people. I mean, look at the kayak launch, screaming out there that people, we ha couldn't have a private kayak launch. Well, that's not true. And we all know that. And we just got the email. We found that out confirmed. today. No, okay. today. Uh, uh, we knew you know, that all No, we along. got that information we, today. We, okay. Regardless, we could have just stop, paid Nelly, it and then stop, it. Stop, stop, stop. So I just Nelly, think. Well, Nellie, stop. If you interrupt again, okay, there will be consequences, okay? You, you were not interrupting. I have a question. Okay, no, no, no. no. But why okay. is it that you know, I can't speak? That's right. You can't. Okay. But what? I don't interrupt you when you speak, Eliana. Uh, Nelly, 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 Nelly. I keep my mouth shut. Until you finish, I don't say anything Nelly, at all. Nelly, do so not, kindly do not respect like me that. and let me speak and finish my com my well, my thoughts. Finish, thought. please. So whatever, just I just want to move on with this meeting. I want to move on with all these um, resolutions and get business done and get things done that are in the benefit of our residents. Thank you. Not all this. Okay, stuff. Charles, you withdrew the motion, yes, so sir. there's no censure motion anymore. No, with okay. motion withdrawn. All right, very good. All right, so we're going to move on. I'll make a motion to censor the mayor. All right, is there a second to that? Okay. Oh, darn. Okay, you, you think I, it, I would it, like to make you know, my motion. Okay, go ahead. Yes. 
I'd like to make a motion to direct the town manager and town attorney to uphold and protect the integrity of the office in which we serve as elected officials for the town of Surfside and not allow double speak and political attacks disguised as town business to disseminate to be disseminated by the town. Okay, is there a second to that motion? I'll second the motion. All right. And um, yeah, I would just ask the vice mayor to add, you know, to the best of their ability um, because it's not, it's not a clear cut. Sure, but I, I mean, I think something needs to be done. Right, well, the, the problem is, is we're tasked, and we're on a discussion now, we're tasked with being responsible. Okay, they're not in charge of telling us what to do. We're in charge, we're supposed to be in charge of telling them what to do, Vice Mayor. That's the way it works, and we're supposed to be grown up enough to be responsible to have a productive, respectful meeting, okay? That's the way it is. And that's not the way it works, and that standard that you're proposing can never work. It's, it's a task they could never undertake. So the whole thing is kind of silly, but let's play the game. There's a motion and a second. Is there any other discussion? Yeah, I'd like to discuss that. All right, go ahead. Okay, I think, you know, in, in this particular, on this topic, I actually agree with the mayor because what, I think we'd love to be able to do that. But okay. the problem is that the mayor's convinced himself that what he's saying is true. It's true to him, but it's not true to anybody else. And so we're asking the people that essentially work for the mayor to tell the mayor that he's lying or he's, or he's wrong or needs to change something, and that's not gonna happen. Because frequently what'll happen is the mayor, I remember at the last zoning meeting we had, we asked for, I think it was Walter Keller's opinion on something or somebody else's opinion, and, and the mayor prefaced it by, just wanna remind you that you work for us, right? Like, this is, it's like the mob. So I think we're asking an impossible task and this is why Jason and, and, and you know, Andy don't want to get involved, and that's why there's a disclaimer. I mean, it's sad that our commissioner col columns have to have a disclaimer to relieve the town of liability for whatever lies happen. So I think we either need to, you know, he's not going to change. A zebra doesn't change his stripes, and shame on me for not knowing that to begin with, and I, I wish I had a time machine to undo it, because I would have had a lot more to say about it. But this is the situation we're in. We did the best, we took it away from him on the cover because he was abusing the privilege. He's not gonna stop lying, he's gonna keep doing it until he's voted out of office, this is what's gonna happen, and this is just what we have to live with. So I support it 100%, but I don't think it's something that's possible to do because it, he's not going to change, like I, said, like I said, Zebra doesn't change his stripes, he's gonna continue to do it, he's gonna continue to you know, make things sound differently, and the frustration here, and it's nice that we're in person, but the frustration here is when we're on Zoom and someone lies about you and you get muted, you never even get to speak up. So some, it's also hard here to sit here and listen to someone say something that's factually incorrect. So I'm holding here the email that was forwarded to me from the town manager today from Janet Zimmerman um, from the state saying to us that after reviewing the kayak launch request, now they're saying that we can do it as long as we don't use the, tie anything to the, Seawall. This information was this morning at 11.10 a.m., Monday, May 10th. So that is when the information became clear to us. There wasn't any, uh, no, no, we didn't know anything. Okay, let me finish speaking. There's a very big bridge between what we want to happen and what can happen. And we cannot promise residents or say that th something's going to happen until we actually know that we can make it happen. Let me finish talking. No, I'm not, because they are. Those those seawalls are public. They are giving us permission to do this because at the time that we did it, I guess the rule was a little bit different and we're not gonna have to, we're not gonna touch the seawall. We're gonna have to go over the seawall, okay? But that information, and by the way, I was thrilled with this information and I shared it immediately with anyone who was concerned about it, okay? There's no withholding from me. In fact, I am too honest with everybody as you complain about, right? But that is, this is exactly what's going on. The comment, by the way, that you said before about the power line thing, I said at the meeting, why do we have to put this on the ballot? Let's just spend the 60 grand, who cares? Spend the 60 grand and get the quote. But you wanted to put it on the ballot. And when someone asked you on next door why we're spending 60 grand, you said, oh, in writing, oh, it's cheaper to do that than spend the 60 grand and just, just do the ballot question. So that was something you said in writing. So what boggles, it's nothing, but what boggles my mind is you're now attributing that, something that you said and something you did to me. So that is not accurate and it's a little bit delusional. So it didn't happen and there's a record and there's video and there's screenshots and there's everything else to back up all of this. So anyone's free to do that. So I do support the idea of the Gazette being a nice, you know, place where we can talk freely and honestly with residents, but he's not gonna change. It's not gonna change. It's not gonna change until March 20, 2022. So this is what we're dealing with unless we wanna pull the entire section and then he'll just keep spewing it on Facebook and on his website and everywhere else. And by the way, he's also been 
advertising for his campaign site in the Gazette this entire year as well. And recently, when he got in trouble for it, now he said, oh, we've moved. This isn't in my campaign site, when it what has been the entire year. And on top of that, what's important that re residents need to know is that the things that you promise in the Gazette that they're, quote, happening, are not happening. We're getting uh, Bell Harbor passed a resolution opposing us closing any of our streets. OK? So th telling the residents, guess what? I closed all our streets when it's not really happening is misleading. OK? That's okay. it. OK. All right. Um, I, okay. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. OK. You go, and then I'll How go. you interpret telling someone on next door that it is cheaper to spend $2,333 versus spending $60,000, which you were not in favor of, okay? And say that on the ballot, which is what people came and read the day of elections, is misleading or is, has, has no connection. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. One thing has nothing to do with the other. People were talking about on next door that why are we why are we putting this on the ballot? Well, because it was cheaper. It was cheaper. It was two thousand three hundred and thirty-three dollars to find out if residents really wanted the project. So you wanted to spend sixty thousand dollars and then put it on the ballot to find out that residents may not want it. So that to me was a, the correct decision to put it on the ballot and spend $2,333 was the most fiscally responsible thing to do. Okay, so now to come here and try to tell me that I was misleading the residents, that's incorrect. And you made statements that the kayak launch could not go there. You affirm that it could not go there, and now you're changing your story as usual. I'm talking, so please do not interrupt me. Okay, so let's stop lying to people. Let's stop misleading residents that you've done that plenty of times. And honestly, I do agree that things need to be done about this Gazette. Things should not, may not be said. And things, and that goes for both parts because you, Eliana, has all, have also put in things about the mayor. And I don't, I don't agree with either you doing it or him doing it. I don't think that we should be bashing any of our uh, elected officials. And I agree with that. But in all reality, each person has the right to say whatever they want. And you can't censor that. You can't stop any of, our, of, of the commissioners or the mayor on the, or vice mayor on this uh, dais to say what they want to say, as you've been saying whatever you want to say. OK? So that's not right either. And that's all I have to say. OK, we're going to be done in a second here, folks. Um, Thank you, Commissioner Velasquez. Listen, uh, Vice Mayor, I just want to talk directly to you. You're a respected member of this community. You've done a lot of work and you've spent a lot of time with a lot of people here. I personally like you very much. We have disagreements on policy issues, okay? And you've never, listen, you keep it up, you're going out of the meeting, okay? Mr. Salzhauer, Mr. Epstein, whatever it is, you're going to be out. Keep it up, one more time. You've worked very hard, and you deserve a lot of credit. You've never said liar, cheat, fraud. Those words don't come out of your mouth. You're respectful. You're a good person. You were raised correctly. You treat people with respect. Commissioner Kessel, you do the same thing, okay? <laughs> Commissioner Velasquez, you do the same thing. You, you have no filter. You have no control. And you don't make sense, especially when you are the one telling me how I'm doing all these. Come on. Pointing at me. That's rude. Well, yeah. Hey, yep. hey, again, <laughs> again, I didn't talk to you. I didn't point at you. Okay, listen, I'm not engaging in a conversation with you. I'm just saying, you sat there and you said all these terrible things. I mean, and you do it consistently. And it's an embarrassment to this commission. Nobody else does it. Nobody else uses the words you use. Nobody else uses the gestures you use. Nobody else comes up with the things that you come up with, okay? You've repeated meeting after meeting that she's lying, he's lying, I'm lying, okay? But you never once say, well, you know what you said? You said that you, it was a lie that you led the charge to halt the electrical thing. That's not a lie. No, that's 
Okay, no, wait, wait, wait. I didn't ask you for your opinion. And you, uh, turn her mic off. Okay, listen, you can't control, you can't control. Okay, listen, Mr. Epstein, one more time. Okay, that's it, I'm serious. You're going out. You're going out. One more time. Okay. The, the fact of the matter is, and again, you did halt it. Stop pointing. I don't have to stop pointing. You did halt it. You did halt it. It wasn't a lie. That everybody. Speak at that meeting, right? uh, listen, listen. You're incorrigible. You're impossible. And it, 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 everybody knows it. And listen, we're just, like you said, the, the truth is, is while you were pointing at me saying you're going to have to live with me, we, we all have to live with you, okay? It's our burden. And we're going to do the best we can. And with that, we're going to move on. Okay. May I? Yeah. I'd like to withdraw the motion, but I'd also like to say two things because you wanted to know some of your inaccuracies. First of all, uh -huh. when we passed the civility resolution, I brought that forward. It was aimed at everyone, not at one person in particular. And regarding the who led the charge with the uh, undergrounding to halt the undergrounding utilities, that's completely false. It was a deferral. I motioned to defer it. There was inaccurate information in Which, there. We're going to talk now, right? You, well, can I, I finish? You, you, can I finish my statement? Okay. There's yeah. there was inaccurate information well, we gotta, in there. Well, we got to let me start the clock then, because if we're going to go, I'm around not going to take three minutes. All right, but a bit again, I, it's, Fine. we got to be fair, right? Yeah. Okay. I don't think I got a second term, Mr. Mayor. You got, you got what? I didn't get a chance to speak for the second round. I, don't I, I, I think that I was the last one. But honestly, Tina I was, the was talking and let her, let her finish. Yeah, I will, I will. But, we're but before Charles says anything, no, I, we need to let Mr. Tina Mr. finish. Mr. Platt, you will be taken out too. One more time, I promise. We're gonna go around again if you want, okay? And Tina, Tina was just talking out of order and it was fine. It sh I thought she had a brief comment. But if you wanna go, you're, you wanna make a talk. It's brief. Okay. I you don't think I've talked at all. Okay, well listen, how about we go around for another two minutes? Um, Can you do I, it? But at this moment, Tina was talking, and, then, and I'd listen, like to finish listen, listening listen, to her. Listen, Nellie, please. I don't believe I had an opportunity to, to, you did to talk well, at listen, all in this you, discussion. You, I listen, don't. Charles, we all I, went around. I was the last one. Tina asked to make a comment, okay? Uh, did Tina I begin? Made, Tina, you made your comment. Yeah, we went around. I wasn't finished, but of yeah, course but I'm you, getting but, censored But it wasn't again. your turn to speak either. Okay, so Charles, we'll do it again. Go ahead for two minutes. Okay, I honestly we'll don't think that I spoke on this item, but I could be wrong. I think I just seconded it. Go ahead. Thank you, sir. Um, I, I, <laughs> is it okay? I, I, I mean, I'm not an oh, expert oh, at this clock yet, it. so I I'm trying to was. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> and um, so, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll just say that uh, perspectives vary and um, everyone is entitled to their perspective, okay? And I, I, it's awesome that you guys actually participate. I mean, look, it, for some reason, this side I recognize everybody and over there a little bit. So welcome everybody. It's, you know, it's awesome that everyone's passionate. Um, sometimes we're our own worst enemies on the perspective issue because, you know, in, in many ways, in my opinion, um, the mayor and Commissioner Salzauer are, are kind of two peas of the same pod um, in, in that, they have the same things th about always wanting to be right, you know, and I understand that, but sometimes just letting things go is a, is a moment, just acknowledging that somebody has a different perspective on it. And, and, and um, you know, the, the, the challenge is that, um, that the, I think that the mayor doesn't understand is that when you have the chairmanship, uh, you have a certain responsibility of objectivity in, in running the meeting as the chair which is kind of a different hat than when you're getting your time to speak. Um, just as if, if I was mentioned in the Gazette, I, I, I don't know if I'd take it personally or not. Probably not, just because I've been conditioned not to. Um, but um, I can understand why Commissioner Salzauer, and particularly the Vice Mayor, who's, the, who's very respectful, especially with decorum and time limits, and isn't as assertive as I am. Um, but Because if I'm not assertive, I don't get to talk either sometimes. Um, so I think sometimes we're just our own worst enemy with that and it's better to just take a step back um, and as I see the passion about both issues you have to acknowledge you know the mayor's not perfect he has this unique role in chair of trying to give us equal time in, across many meetings and um, and some, sometimes there's hot button issues because Charles, of the way that they express themselves thank you thank you okay we're, we're gonna go around like this so you can go next Eliana and then, El, then Nellie 
Two minutes. Um, what, are, what would you like to talk about now? I, you don't have to talk. Well, I would like to hear from the, I thought the residents wanted to comment. Well, They're all waving cards. What, what, we're gonna, Nelly, you don't have a comment? No, I have a comment. All right, go I ahead. I have a comment, okay? Two minutes. Um, I, I really appreciate what Commissioner Kessel is saying. Um, I don't, I'm hearing, I hear it, what Commissioner Kessel says, and he's probably, it's, he's probably true. A lot of that is very accurate. Um, I don't, I don't take being silenced very well. Um, I don't like being lied about while I'm sitting right there. And I don't have the ability, I wish I was more like Commissioner Kessel and I had the ability to just turn the other cheek when someone slanders me on their website, on their blog, on Facebook, in the Gazette, in emails. I just don't. I don't have that capacity and I guess I'm at fault for that. But I, and I'm not working on that either. I'm a little too old to work on the turn the other cheek. But what I am going to do is make sure that the truth is f number one, is the number one priority. So when you say someone led a charge on something, they have to at least have been speaking at that meeting and taken a position on the issue. So when you l literally write something publishing to the residents, and when you're writing in the Gazette, you're not writing to the people that have already been to the meeting. They don't need to know what happened. They were there. Okay, you are taking advantage of the fact that people are too busy living their lives to know what happened. And so you're taking advantage of that and feeding them this false narrative of you as some sort of a hero. You had one month, I remember, where you took credit for every single thing this commission ever did. Like, you're the hero. Oh, guess what I did since elected? I did X, Y, Z. I'm the beach chair hero. Okay, all you did for beach chair was triple the number of chairs and try to bring back storage overnight. Okay, you gutted what we were trying to do. But yet you, you come out there and say, I'm the beach, beach chair hero. You are literally, you just, all you've been doing for the past year is running a reelection campaign at taxpayers expense in the Gazette and that's not okay all right and I never wanted to get into any of this okay we started this on the same page or I thought we were on the same page and you told me and this is the truest thing you've ever said to me you told me before we got elected listen it's important that we all get along because whoever doesn't get along is gonna have a really bad time we're gonna make sure it's not gonna be a lot of fun for them okay well I guess it's me I guess you decided that I'm not getting along with what you want to do all the time because I'm not and so I'm not going to have a good time. Okay, guess that's what? It. That's guess two, what? Two I am having a good time, and I'm having it for the two sake minutes. of the residents. You're done, Nelly. Okay, um, Eliana, it's very easy for you to say that people slander, or the mayor in particular, slanders you on his website or on the Gazette. At least he's doing it publicly. You go and do it on your uh, Surfside must not be sold thing. And I have several emails of residents that have sent this stuff to me of how you put on your Surfside must not be sold, slandering the mayor and slandering myself. And you've done it more than one time. And I'm more than happy to share all these emails. And I, th I think someone has done even public record requests for your stuff that you've never provided. So if you're gonna say something like that, you should also provide us with all your emails that you put on your Surfside must not be sold. And I can bring proof of stuff like what exactly I'm saying right now. In terms of, I gotta say one thing, Charles, to you. I'm sorry, but it, Tina was talking. And you should have waited your turn until, I understand that you didn't talk, or you talked, or you didn't talk, but Tina was talking. And there's, this has happened in more than one occasion. Okay, and I'm fair with everybody, and where there's, where there's in, un, something unjust, we have to change that. And Tina was talking, and she had not finished her thought, yet you interrupted till the point that you had, were able to talk. And that's not right. Because I've been, I've been silenced myself, and I don't like it. And she had the right to get her opinion across, whether we like it or not, but she has that right. As she is an elected official and one of these commissioners, well, I'm sorry, vice mayor, so sorry. Um, and she has a right to say what she has to say. And I think we need to respect each other on this and wait our turn. So I really appreciate that we change this kind of attitude and moving forward we make these meetings more respectable and to the point and in the benefit of the residents, which is what we're here for. Thank you very much. Okay, Nelly, it wasn't her turn. Now it's your turn, go ahead. I wanna thank Commissioner Velasquez for that last statement. Um, Mayor, I'll thank you for the kind words you said about me, although you said them right here, you never said them in the Gazette. Uh, I just wanted to finish what I was saying and it was about whatever that we, I, me and Commissioner Salzauer led the charge to, uh, I, do I have to read it? Um, I don't know where it is in here. Um, but anyways, the fact is, Commissioner Salzauer didn't say much about the undergrounding utilities. 
it was not to lead the charge to, to try to halt it. It was to defer it because there was a big typo in that, in that whole report. It left out half the town. It only went to like 92nd Street. What about from 92nd and 96th Street? That was not in there, and I caught that. And for catching that, you go ahead and say, I, I led the charge to, and, uh, to try to halt the project. It wasn't to halt the project. It was to get the right information out there. Plus, we didn't disclose to the residents how much it was going to cost. That was a surprise to all of us. And I only wanted the information out there for the residents. I was not trying to stop the project from g moving forward. So, you know, you, you did print out false information about me, and I don't think that was accurate or fair or just, because I was only looking out for the people as I'm supposed to do. That's what I'm elected to do. And I read the material, and I look for anything like that. And I found it. And that was important. Okay. Well, the fact of the matter is, is that undergrounding project has been slow walked since the day we were elected. Okay. You did vote to halt it. You did bring up the fact that there were errors in the streets. The, the consultant acknowledged that on the spot and said that it was fixed, okay? So it could have been fixed. It, you could have made the motion to fix it and moved it forward. But what you did was people are very eager to get that done. 75% of the electorate want to get it done and you're dragging your feet. Okay, you're voting to put it off for a whole nother month, again and again and again. That stuff adds up, that's what's frustrating to me. Okay, we didn't have to put it off. Okay, and then when I called the emergency meeting, nobody, were t nobody, uh, come, uh, nobody agrees to sign up to have the meeting. So they slow walk the, the, the emergency meeting. So I have to call another meeting to get the thing back on track. All we wanna do is get the power lines underground. I don't want, you know, you wanna slow walk it, that's your business, okay? My business is to make sure it gets put forward quickly and it gets done, okay? And if you're gonna, if you're gonna vote to halt it, which is exactly what happened, or everybody else is gonna vote to halt it, okay? Whether it's for a day, a week, or another month, that was an unnecessary halt because you came back at the next meeting and you voted for it, exactly what you halted. You didn't change one word. Okay, so the bottom line is, is that that's a difference of opinion that you and I have, and I respect the fact that you had that opinion, okay? But don't tell me I'm lying because I said you halted it. You did, okay? You did, and I'm talking, you did halt it. It was halted, and I had to go out of my way to beg the manager to ask for an emergency meeting to put it back on the schedule so that we could, again, come back as soon as possible and get it back on track. Okay, so now we're done. Can, can I just respond Not quick, really, quickly? no, 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 because okay. we're, here, we're here for two hours, okay? We're gonna go around again. If you respond and she responds, and then, then we lose control. Now, we're not gonna have any comments on this because this was strictly an additions, deletions, and linkages item. Uh, we're moving on to the next item, which is the uh, I think the consent. residents wanted to talk. I think they, they might have wanted to talk, but mm -hmm. we're not talking on this issue, go ahead. Mayor, just the motion was withdrawal, so there's actually no motion on the table, so there's no reason for a public speaker. Thank you. And it's about 8.15, time for good and welfare. That's good. Oh, okay, perfect. so let's have good and welfare. Perfect. Uh, all right. Now, yeah, it, it's, uh, it's a long time talking about nothing. Uh, let's, let's regroup here. Let, We've got uh, how many people? Let me let me just bring this up too. Three, four. Okay, these are not all good and welfare. Let's see. Do we have how many people want to speak in good and welfare? Okay. Listen, I'm going to go ahead. We're not going to use card. Listen, my my position is is we don't need cards. We don't need hurdles to prevent people from talking. Okay. We'll do good and welfare like we do it on Zoom. Let's. You need Let, cards. That's yeah, the that's rule. nice that you think so. It's, we need cards. Listen, it's stop, in the, it's stop in the, stop interrupting. It's in stop, the rules. Stop we interrupting. We need cards. It's in the rules. Stop interrupting. We have cards. Has anybody signed up for Good and Welfare? Okay. Do I have the cards? That's it. Okay, we got. Okay, we got four or five cards for good and welfare. Is that right? Five people want to speak. Have you all signed up? You can talk about anything you want at good and welfare. Okay, so 
The first one is uh, Jeff Rose. Come on up, Jeff. Is your mic is your mic on? Jeff Rose, I don't think it's on. Jeff Rose, 8851 Fried Avenue. Here we go. I know it may sound like I'm going to go on a rant here, but let's get this kayak launch done once and for all. All of you seem to be in agreement for over 15 months now that we should have at least one in Surfside. When you wanted a beach share ordinance, it got done. When you wanted a new zoning code, it's getting done. Under, undergrounding power lines, getting done. Now let's get this done. I'm going to make it so simple. First, since no one in town wants to seem to take ownership of the signs that are on every waterfront street end that say no kayak launching or paddleboard launching, get rid of them and install one hour parking signs closer to the street. If you leave the current signs, it proves that all talk, no action. Next, install ladder and floating dock and say it's for health, safety, and welfare. Don't tell me we can't call it that. Need I remind you that this is the same commission that said we couldn't have demolition during COVID because it would spread construction debris and we called it health, safety, and welfare. Prior to COVID, 15 months ago, the street ends were open and being used to launch paddle boards and kayaks. Stop trying to create a hysteria that thousands of people are going to come here to launch. For 80 plus years, the street ends have been open. How many complaints do we have that all of Miami are coming to launch here? Next, by putting them at every street end, it won't force you to make an immediate decision on a controversial launch at the park, which by the way, is still 18 months away from being finished. So if you wait to do it until then, we will not have any launch under this commission. Also, our street ends are technically pocket parts, pocket parks, so let's call them what they really are. We need to step it up with our pocket parts and start utilizing all of them before we even consider buying another piece of property, unless it's the pink house next to the park. For example, one could be an outdoor exercise area, another mini golf, another pickleball court, another three to four tables for kids to sit and do homework. This is what Surfside should be about, utilizing what we have. That's what we need to do a survey on and get some new ideas. Now let me counter all your objections and the reasons why some of you say we can't have it like that. Yes, we can. We can just install a ladder and floating dock. Having a ladder and floating dock is safer than having nothing, which we had nothing for over 80 years. Two, our beaches are open. That's a bigger liability. Three, every street end and gets rid of the problem with all the potential traffic you say will bring to the 96th Street Park launch. Four, they are park it pocket parks, as I have stated, not street ends and owned by all Surfside residents, not just the few people that live near them. And five, over 80% of the people who responded to the kayak launch survey said we should have a launch in Surfside. So please commissioners, make a motion at the end of Good and Welfare and get this done already. Time to cut out all the talk and take action. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, Yale, Maslia? Maslia. Maslia. Hi. Hi. Well, okay, um, I live on 9581 Bay Drive, across, directly across from the park. Thank you very much. Um, it will be a disaster. We ha as it is, there is no parking. We are constantly, constantly being bombarded with every child in the neighborhood, and every day there's almost an accident. So just the sheer fact that you're gonna add, even, uh, there's seven parking spaces. I don't, I don't know where you're going to put people. How are they going to carry their, their kayak? I mean, unless you're, you know, some miracle worker, and really, we don't want them parking on our yard. I mean, my, my neighbor was pregnant at one time when they opened up the park. Nobody could get, people were just very kindly, they're so polite, they just parked their car in front of our driveway, but it's just one minute. Well, if she has to go to the hospital in that one minute, so now imagine just a few more cars. Even if you buy the, car, the, the, par, the, the pink house across the street, because I have no idea of what that could give, still, is that gonna be a parking lot? Are you gonna bring more kids? Do you know how, I mean, that street, that corner, they're constantly turning, you know, when there's traffic on 96th Street, they're turning, and they're making that illegal turn. Do you know how many kids are almost this close from being killed on their skateboards? What are you gonna do then? One kid is all you need. 
okay? I mean, if you guys have great solutions, I'd like to hear it, but I, for the time being, unless you can figure out a way to have more parking spaces, I think it's a terrible idea. Find another place to do it. The park is too little. It's, it's a tiny little park. I mean, what are they thinking? I mean, what are you guys thinking? <laughs> it's just absurd. And to say that, oh yeah, we need more, you know, we need this, we need this in Surfside. No, it's a small city. Anyways, that's my piece. Thank you very much. George Cortez. George Cortez, 8925 Bay Drive. <clears throat> I think we have to turn the microphone up a little, Jose. Is it on? Just, you, you just the, need to get closer. Is the, yeah, closer. Is the green light on? Uncomfortably close. <laughs> green light is on. Okay. Uh, lady before me, I think, said a lot. It is a small town. We cannot have everything we want. The street ends are not parks. They have no control. There's no opening or closing to them. There's no parking access. There are no utilities. I've seen people defecate at the end of the park, end of the streets. I've seen people do the craziest things at the end of the streets. You have no idea what I see out my window. And no, there is no parking for this. We have a beach. I used to paddle from the beach. I didn't always live on a seawall, okay? That does not make me rich. I work very hard to those who believe that because we live on the water, we consider ourselves elite, okay? What we do want is respect for our property. The street ends are no different than the five foot or six foot swales in front of any house. Nobody would like somebody to show up, have their lawn chopped out and have lunch and set a picnic in front of their house. It is no different. The street ends are tiny and they're right adjacent to bad people's backyards. Being barbecuing in the back of your house and have somebody show up and jokingly ask you what you're grilling and you're in your own private space is very unappealing, okay? It's rude and it's intrusive, okay? These are not parks. There's no opening, there's no closing. There's no garbage. There's no, there, there's nothing. It's a, just an empty space. Treat it like a park is reckless and it's dangerous. I've seen the most careless things done on these street ends. Boats trying to pick people up on the street end, inappropriate. First of all, the rocks don't allow it. So where do they go? They go to the property right next door and think your backyard is access to a private boat. Okay, so I say we keep things a little more small town. If anyone wants to paddle, they can go to the beach. Thank you. Thank you, George. Uh, Jonathan Horn. Jonathan Horn, 1421 Biscaya Drive. George basically uh, covered everything. What this gentleman back here failed to realize is that during this whole COVID episode, we had people coming in from other cities, not residents. There were drug deals going on at the end of our street. Uh, I mean, I can't tell you half the stuff that was going on. Police did a fantastic job of doing the best they could. You guys under, don't understand, I see everything. I'm out twice a day walking the dog and during the day. And we've gotten people from all over the place. And again, it's a public place, I get it. But it's our town. And we need to keep the town the way it is, safe. There's nothing else to say. And comments I've heard about the wealthy and this and that, kind of disconcerting, especially when we were supporting individuals on this dais. Thank you. Thank you. Marianne? <clears throat> Marianne Myshide, 9225 Collins Avenue. And um, I'm speaking about the behavior from the last hour um, in good and welfare. Uh, the repeated interruptions and behavior of the commission is appalling. This is not a productive use of time for the residents. Please move forward and stop keeping your scorecards. Stick with the agenda with respect 
and I applaud the mayor for trying to do his best to keep decorum. Thank you. Thank you. Joshua Epstein. I don't know, can you guys hear me? Okay. Joshua Epstein, 9317 Bay Drive. I think what a lot of the kayak speakers were getting at is what seems to be the hypocrisy in a lot of, seems to be literally every area. We want to be small town, we want to not have all this traffic problem, people getting hit by cars, but then we want to try to bring more traffic in. We want the, the, all the um, lines underground, but we don't know how we're going to pay for it. We don't know how the, the details behind it. So I think we should focus a lot more on the details rather than just these big grand ideas for everything. Because I could write down 500 ideas right now. I want a fer uh, Ferris wheel in the middle of Surfside. It just doesn't work when you get into the, log the logistics of it. In terms of Commissioner Kessel's um, motion to censure, I think it kind of gets at what's the big, um, it, it gets a truth in government at the end of the day. I don't think Commissioner Saul is how we're giving a middle finger um, influence. Is the commission censure something that you use when, it, it, like, if, the, if there's something going on within the commission or from a commissioner that is really influencing in a negative way the, the ability of residents to participate or the ability of other commissioners to speak to one another. What has the biggest influence? What has had the biggest influence is the constant muting of other commissioners on Zoom. The muting of residents, the reducing of the speech time, the lying in the, the gazette. And I was laughing the whole time where you're saying, I never lie, I only muted two people. We all know that's not true. I have an entire thing. Um, I had an entire next door post that Robert Listman posted last month, an entire thing of every single one of your lies. And I actually put over here, this was something that I was gonna post on next door, but. I guess it works now in relation to vice, the vice mayor, um, one of her motions to try to remove the, the commission comment from the Gazette. I put that a democracy is founded around policy dis disagreements, but all of which are based in the same reality. Alternative facts based in alternative realities are lies, not opinions. Intentionally lying to residents is not protected by the First Amendment is a clear violation of truth and government ethics clause. The oath sworn by each of our elected officials is to preserve and protect, which includes the duty to protect against threats from within. Therefore, Charles's, Charles Burkett's continued feud with the truth, aka his disinformation campaign to residents, using his elected town power, using all of our town resources, not only violates truth in government, but it also provides, it also presents a clear and present threat to Surfside's image, reputation, and credibility, thereby issuing a mandate to Charles Burkett's, Charles Burkett's colleagues, which are the four of you as commissioners, to preserve and protect by removing the platform being misused in order to ensure residents aren't being intentionally lied to. Thank you to the vice mayor for standing by the oath you swore. That oath of preserving and protecting is the oath of residents to be able to preserve, to preserve residents' rights to be able to speak up, to perverse, um, protect commissioners' rights to speak up. And I know dissent is not really, no one wants people to speak out against them, but that is a fundamental part of a democracy had. I know you have a motion later on here on, um, on the agenda, and I know you're shaking your head when I said a fundamental part to democracy. It's speaking out and truthfully speaking out. Lies and disinformation are not protected by the First Amendment. You can't just say whatever you want if it's false, and that's, you uh, can provide multiple different Supreme Court um, cases that have been ruled in that exact manner. But another item uh, that's later on in the agenda is regarding the more power that you tried to vest in, your, or that you're trying to vest in yourself. And I think that kind of gets to the root of everything. I think that we all have to remember that who put you there, it was the residents that put you there, it was the 20%, each of you are 20%. Mr. Epstein, that's three minutes, thank you. Okay, um, so pretty much stop lying to residents, stop, yeah. stop yeah. lying to residents, stop lying Thanks. to residents, Thanks. stop lying to stop, residents, that's all I have to say. Stop speaking yeah. to the commission right now. Thank, thank you. you. Mr. Platt. Jeffrey Platt, 9225 Collins Avenue. We spent the year in COVID. I haven't seen any of you live. It's a good idea that I see everybody live now. The mute button doesn't work anymore. We are now allowed to say what we want. That decorum thing in the agenda, I shouldn't be intimately involved with that. It was written solely and exclusively for me. The last Nudnik, who sat in that chair, wanted to quiet me any way he could. So he put this in the decorum thing. <laughs> what a joke. I'm glad you're going to take it out because you're not going to stifle me ever. And I don't like your threats that you're going to throw me out either. I don't take threats, not for one second. Now I want to talk about lie, deny, and defy, because that's what you two are doing. 
you are, about this undergrounding thing. It wasn't about $7,000 for three questions. That's not what it was about. It was a non-binding referendum whether we should spend $60,000 to get a price to do a project that most of us are in favor for anyway. But no, you wanted to ignore that and put a question on the ballot for an estimate that's not even half of what this project is going to cost. So you have 70 percent of the residents agreeing to a project that they have no idea what it's going to cost or how it's going to be paid for. You've even intimated that you want to use all our reserves to pay for this. You've mentioned it. We have 15,000 in reserves here, and we have 6,000 in reserves here, and we could use that money to pay for this. You didn't tell the residents that we were going to pay for this using all our reserves. You originally said we were going to get federal grants and state grants, and we weren't going to pay for it, and our taxes weren't going to go up. That's an absolute lie. You put a ballot question with an incorrect amount of money on it. I don't know. That sounds like nonsense. You know, it's like, we're selling Ferraris for 35 bucks. But when you come to the showroom, it's going to be 35,000 bucks. Because that's what you're doing. You've totally, and I could show it to you in writing, $60,000 non-binding to get a price. I could show it to you in writing. You two have totally ignored that because it doesn't make your agenda. You're trying to bully us into a project that you don't know what we're going to pay for it. Sounds dumb to me. I don't know. Would anybody here pay for a project that you don't know the price of? Would you? Would anybody? I don't think so. That's it for now. Next time. All right. Uh, <laughs> Tina Loper. You were close, Mayor. Tim. 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 That's so my like, handwriting. It's like Tina. That's it's my like, handwriting. Uh, uh, 8843 Carlisle Avenue. <clears throat> I was watching online uh, and wanted to race down here when I heard the kayak launch uh, being discussed. Mr. Rose, if you have a run for commission, you got my vote. Uh, I desperately want to see a kayak launch like so many of our neighbors. I agree it is time to act on this. We've talked about it forever. I understand the concerns of the people that live next to those parks, and I do believe they're parks. They're not just street ends. Uh, you know, we'll put up fencing. There are ways that we can mitigate the danger and the, 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 the disruption to those individuals who bought land next to a public space, knowing that that was public space. And that was surely priced into the price of that property when it was purchased. So I think we can address those concerns. I do not believe that we're going to see a mass uh, rush of people to our street ends for launching the kayak launch. There's one at 73rd Street. It's very rarely used. Uh, but going to the beach is not an option uh, when you want to access the, land, the, the water that is like the intercoastal. It's a totally different experience in that, in that body of water. And as residents here on an island that is surrounded on all sides, it's ridiculous to me that we don't have access to a full half piece of our water. Um, I think putting the, the launch at the street ends will also deal with the number one complaint that I think uh, is valid for putting it at the 96th Street Park, which is parking. I, I do believe that we're asking a lot of those people that are right across the street from the 96th Street Park. And this is an easy way to kind of mitigate that problem, especially if we don't use just one street end. If we put kayak launches on multiple street ends, it'll share the burden. So I, I'm just asking you guys to, I, I would second what Mr. Rose said, put it on a, a vote today. Let's get this thing moving. Thank you, Tim. Daryl Wall. Uh, 1453 Biscay Drive. Uh, I'm an avid, avid kayaker. And uh, I, I definitely agree that uh, we need a kayak launch in Surfside. 
and the only logical place to put it is at the 96th Street Park. Uh, I belong to a group who, who go kayaking three days a week, and we seek out places to launch kayaks, and the group has about 20 members. And we would descend on Surfside Street and Parks if the kayak launches were here. If you put it at 96th Street Park, it's a controlled, it's a hey, controlled listen, uh, facility. Platt, hold on, Daryl. You remember you, you said you, you, you challenged me to throw you out? Interrupt again. One more time. Go ahead. Yeah, 96th Street Park is controlled. I believe they lock it up at sundown or something. It, the, there would be hardly any po uh, parking problem there because you could easily allow surfsiders to leave their kayaks at the park so they wouldn't have to load them on their cars to drive them over to any street end. It would be very, very simple to do, under control, and, uh, and it also when you look at the, some of our street end parks, there's huge boulders and things. It, you're asking for, I think, liability problems. But the 96th Street Park would be ideal. It's there for, it's hardly used. I mean, it, I guess the kids play soccer a little bit, but uh, I think it'd be a great idea to have it there. And uh, I would look forward to getting that done. Thank you. No, no. Okay. Thanks, Daryl. You know what? Our, our clock's not working too well. I'm going to have to. Okay, we'll try that. But anyway, next speaker is Donna Katz. Donna. Donna. Sorry, Joanna Katz. Hi. Joanna Katz, uh, okay. 9141 Prowth. Uh, I believe that we need kayak launches. I think the 96th Street Park is the wrong place for it. I think there is too much traffic, too many kids. I do agree with Jeff Rose. It should go to the end of each of the streets. It makes perfect sense. Um, I also want to talk for a second about the permitting um, problem we have in this town right now. I just did my driveway. It took six months to get permission to put a new driveway in. It used to take two to three days. I understand that we're farming out to a very nice and very capable person, but that is not the process for this town. Too many projects going on. We give in our, our request to have this done. It sits on a desk, then it gets FedEx to him, then it sits on his desk. He eventually gets to it. He then FedExes it back. It's, it doesn't work in a town that has so many projects. We need to change that. Thank you. Thank you. Ashley Deng. Good evening, Ashley Diener from 9500 Bay Drive. I do live on a uh, corner uh, lot, as they call it. Um, I don't really have a problem or issue having a kayak launch, um, but I do uh, have an issue uh, with the parking, if that could be addressed, and also with the fact of making it uh, public. Uh, I don't really see a benefit of making um, a, kayak launch, a kayak launch public. I mean, what? What are we getting out of it? Why, why do we need to do that? We have a lot of uh, residents here that want to enjoy their space. Why do they have to share it with everyone else and wait in line maybe to launch a kayak or to park or whatever? So I think that's a disastrous idea. Further, there's more liability on the town the more people you have at the parks. There's more upkeep and maintenance. So why should I pay for all that uh, extra money so you can open it up to the, the public? Um, uh, the park is for children uh, mainly, and you're you're asking to have more people there, and you know more liability for kids as well. So I think it's a disastrous idea to open it up to the public. As far as uh, corner launches for kayak, every corner that that's crazy. I mean, every day I got to pick up garbage uh, on my lot. Uh, people throw masks. Uh, glass bottles, uh, everything. There's so much garbage now as it is, and and it's not even a kayak launch. Uh, sometimes I can't park my car because people are parking their cars there. My spots, my guests can't park in front of my house uh, because we got people uh, parking there. So to have it in every corner lot, I mean, the Rose or, or uh, Tim need to, need to live there and actually see what goes on in order really to uh, make. Which house would you? Thank you. We can talk about it after the meeting. <laughs> and um, so that's really a disastrous uh, idea. Thank you all for your kind attention, and I hope you make the right decisions. Thank you very much. 
Anybody else for good and welfare that has not spoken? Horace? Good evening, Horace Henderson, 9195 Collins Ave. Um, the last 20 minutes or so, I've heard almost everybody speak about their uh, particular issues within the town and, um, and ask the commission to, uh, to hear their side and to think about it and to, and to be thoughtful on it. Um, I think those are the people and the things that we need to be thinking about and that the commission needs to be thinking about. All of this garbage about who said what and who's lying and who's not lying has got to stop. And I'm looking at you, Commissioner Salzauer. It has to stop, all right? You've got to listen to the people. You've got to solve their problems. And you've got to take your, the, the amount of time that you're given and formulate your speech such that it's coherent and makes sense and convinces somebody of what you're trying to say, OK? That's what it has to do. We have to get through the agenda. We have to get things done. And I see two people who are not doing that on the commission, and we have to do that. I really, really wish that everybody could be more like Mr. K Commissioner Kessel, be thoughtful, be clear, be concise, and get the items resolved. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else that hasn't spoken? Okay, I'm going to close this port. I'm sorry. May I have two emails? Okay, go ahead. The first one is from Araldo Sanchez. He's the property manager in 9499 Collins Avenue. Good afternoon, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Commissioners. On behalf of all residents of this, pa this Piaggia Ocean Condominium, we would like to share a comment with the Commission Chambers. Several of our owners are very concerned with the pets being off their leash on our beach. We had one incident already in which one of our owners were attacked by a dog. Fortunately, no one was harmed. We would like for the commission to redo the beach, sign, the beach signs and include a warning, a warning for pet owners before there is another incident in which could result in something more serious. We thank you in advance for your attention to the serious matter. The second one is from Fernanda Sequeira. She didn't uh, put an address. Mr. Mayor, why did, didn't you announce the retirement of Captain Bambis? Did you announce to all the residents the promotion of the Lieutenant Healy and cap and the cap to captain? If not, why not? Nelly, can you address the dangerous corners of the Marriott? We need a traffic light, as bad as it sounds. The second tower of the Four Seasons, it's buying built. Please address the traffic situation, Charles Castle. That's it, Mayor, thank you. All right, thank you, okay. Yeah, absolutely. Everybody can say something. You want to go for it? Let you, you know what? I'd like to go first. All right, go ahead. Um, I just wanted to address everyone that talks about the kayak launch. What I've heard of the residents that live on Bay Drive, which I understand your concerns, is the parking more than even the kayak launch itself. Um, what I think the solution to that is, for example, I live on By Byron Avenue. We get this sticker and nobody can park on our block because they will get a ticket. And this has worked very well because when I moved to this town, this was already happening and I, I know that this wasn't here always. So this particular item that I'm holding in my hand will definitely work and we will have our police officers there to make sure that whoever parks in this area that says no parking unless you have this sticker or this tag, um, you will get a ticket. And when things hurt people in their pocket, they stop doing them. And on, like I said, on Byron Avenue, nobody parks and dares to go to the beach and leave their car in front of my house or block my driveway or that of my neighbor or anyone else. And trust me that I will make sure that if we put that kayak launch at the 96th Street Park, you all will be considered and your concerns are very valid. But at a street end, I don't think this is the right place because there's first, there's no supervision. Someone can fall in there and hurt themselves. And we got a major problem on our hands. This is not the place to do this. At the, at the 96th Street Park, we can have it very well placed there with fences and everything secured that only our residents are gonna be able to use this. 
because this is a private kayak launch. It will not be used by people from anywhere in any part of the city. So just, just here, and I just, I, I know that that was your concern, Jael. So yes, I, absolutely, if you'd like to. Can, can she say something? Wait, wait, uh, wait, 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 wait. You're talking for three minutes, okay. and we're gonna go around. So um, yeah, that's what I wanted to let you guys know, because I've, I've heard not just from you, and uh, from uh, Mr., sorry, I wrote your name down here, <laughs> uh, Ashley, um, but all the residents that live on Bay Drive, and, I, and I've um, also talked to several of them, and the main concern was definitely the parking. So like I said, this is, uh, to me, this is the solution. And if we have to put that no parking period at all on that street, it will, we will do that. But if they get tickets, they'll stop parking. And we'll have a police officer there during the time that um, the park is open. Okay, thank you. Tina, you wanna go next? I'm gonna try to go in order. Sure, you know, okay. So I remember we talked. So first I'd like to thank everyone for coming here in person and, uh, and speaking. Um, and, I'd, and I would like to apologize for how the meeting started. I did not start it that way, but I sure did participate in it. And it was not the right way to go for our first in-person meeting. Um, regarding the kayak launch, I have one word to say, Paddletopia. Okay, Paddletopia took place at 96th Street Park. It takes place at 96th Street Park. Uh, it was done there. I do understand the parking concerns, but if you have parking concerns about the park, how do you think it's gonna work out for the street ends? And um, to Mr. Rose, I, I know you're in interested in running for uh, commission and I, I look forward to you sitting up here and realizing that you cannot just put a ladder and, a, and whatever you said on every single street and it just doesn't work that way. Um, so when you sit up here, you'll understand. But right now I'm, I'm here and, I'm, and I listen to everyone and I'm understanding the issues. Um, you also have some street ends that you cannot use because they are uh, private, they sit on a lake that's privately owned. So those are not even to be considered. Uh, then if you put it on a street end like where Mr. Diener lives, um, that's not on the private lake, but it's still next to his home where he's already having issues with litter. And um, you know, I guess people also hanging out there, maybe they shouldn't be. Um, they're not exactly pocket parks, therefore, you know, viewing the sunset, being able to, you know, sit by the water. It's not really ideal for picnicking. There's no trash cans there. We could put trash cans there. Then it's another stop for our sanitation. I, I don't really want to go on with this. Um, I think, though, ultimately, you know, we, we did the survey of the kayak launch to find out where do people want them, how many people want them, and I think we have the results. Uh, the majority, I believe, did pick 96th Street Park. Uh, I appreciate what Commissioner Velasquez said about the parking, and I, th I think, you know, it's, it's something we still have to work out logistics for it, um, but, you know, let's start there. I don't know that it's right to start at a street end because the problem is much worse, and you don't have any kind of attendance there, uh, you know, supervision or staff. So. Um, that's that's my thoughts on it, and I'm still open-minded to to the kayak launch, you know. But uh, you know, that's where that's at. And let's see. Um, I'm, I'm still speaking, I think. Um, okay, primarily it was about the kayak launch. Uh, there was something else. Somewhere. Oh, the the. Um, the one the clerk read about the dogs on the beach. I have been, <laughs> our town manager can tell you, the majority of the messages he gets from me are regarding dogs on the beach, mostly unleashed. I have been addressing this like for months and we are on it. There are supposed to be new signs. Um, I, I, think, I, think, uh, I think it was Mr. Sanchez, I thank him. And when I saw his email come in, I, I'm sure I'm gonna write him tomorrow to let him know what Tina, we've been doing. That, that's three minutes, the clock's okay. not working. Um, that's fine, but I'm done. You can, you can wrap up. Just I'm done, no, okay. it's fine. All right, Charles? Um, I think those are very great comments, um, I'd add. Let's right go to there. Myles, um, the first one to just thank the town members, um, you know, the residents as well as my fellow, uh, I'll speak up as well as my fellow members of the commission because, you know, as I've said before, the whole is better, or the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Um, everyone is valid of, with your point of view and what you speak about, and that's why we have to find some balance. Um, well, I agree with some, 
uh, in, in essence, that especially the observation that kayak launches and these types of things accessing, accessing our natural resources, which the, the, uh, the ocean and the bay are one of those resources. So there's actually a master plan uh, by the region and the state of Florida, and Miami Beach has begun to, um, to uh, propose, plan, and integrate use of the waters by kayak, through having kayak launches at every street end on um, Normandy, for example. So every French rue um, in, for the proposal will have a, a kayak launch. Uh, the ones that are out there are underutilized, the one at 73rd Street as well as throughout Miami and, um, and uh, Broward. Um, I know that there's anxiety about it because it's something new for Surfside. But I think it can work um, with, with, um, with some reasonable ideas. Um, it is a, 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 an access point and a resource that leads to wellness and health and exercise. Um, and I think that it should be accessed at every point. In fact, when you access it at every point, it, dis it distributes and disseminates um, the impacts. Um, but it certainly has to be clean. There can't be people uh, violating privacy, et cetera. And, um, and I recognize that there are, there are unique challenges there. So we have to do it right. And, um, and George Cortez spoke about that. And I, I, I name everybody by name, so I guess you won't, maybe you won't uh, all speak. But um, you know, that's legitimate. Uh, on a corner property, I have issues too. And, uh, but those, the shared spaces should be utilized by the public. That's what, that's what quality of life is about. Well, securing and protecting people's privacy to the best of our ability. That's how this town was designed, and I'm going to continue to support that. Um, dogs on the beach is, you know, and, and keeping people safe and keeping that the um, the dog, um, you know, feces off the beach, for example, is a basic priority of, of wellness, health, and safety. And um, I think that when we when we distract code enforcement and the police with non-essential business, um, those types of things are not enforced. Um, on Sundays, for example, when there isn't code enforcement, I know the town manager is going to try to try to address that. Um, it's just so much because the beach chair ordinance allows the commercial activity, which I wish we didn't allow, um, because there's, you see the alcohol being served, and it's completely hypo hypocritical to be, um, you know, allowing dogs and not keeping people safe, and then not, you know, worry that somebody's being served wine there, and then the next ones are going to be kicked off for a beer. Um, but I really appreciate everyone, and, um, and it's, it's really um, incredible in person to hear the different ways of communicating, and they're both completely valid. And you're sitting, you know, you, you can be neighbors and, and communicate differently, but you're, I'm hearing Commissioner Kessel, thank, thank you. Commissioner Salasauer. Uh, yeah, I want to thank everybody for coming in person, and I want to thank everyone for participating on Zoom for the past year. We had a lot of meetings, too many meetings probably, um, but I, I do appreciate you coming and talking. I, you know, I think that everyone's got sort of valid points about this kayak launch. I do believe that it does not belong in 96th Street Park, um, and that's because I don't know who said it. Someone said that 96th Street Park is hardly used. That is, could not be further from the truth. I mean, maybe during COVID when it was shut. That place is brimming. I mean, it is hot, happening all the time. It's packed, and it's a children's park. Kayaking is an adult activity. It does not belong in or near a children's park. When you go to soccer, you can't even find a parking spot. So this idea that you could have a parking pass, there's not even enough spots, and kayaking is something where you go to the water and then you leave your car for many hours. Kayaking is not a, I'm coming for 10 minutes and then I'm leaving. I'm not, you're not dropping off your kids for soccer. You are leaving your car there. And for the residents that live in that area, that is a tremendous, tremendous burden. It's a tremendous um, danger to have that many cars going in and out. We are absolutely cannot store kayaks in that area. We have a tiny park. That park is tiny. My solution is to buy the house next door and have a giant piece of land. And then you can have everything you want there, including parking, including the kayak launch and everything. And if that is what's going to keep the peace for this town, and that's going to serve as a legacy for future generations, then let's put our money there. Let's do that. But for everyone to say, not in my backyard, that someone lives on the water, when you buy your house on the water, there's an area that is public. And yes, there's the first five feet of my front lawn, and it doesn't make me thrilled to see people sitting there and picnicking every day, which they do, you know, landscapers, etc. And I have to clean up the garbage afterwards, but that is, that is not my land. It's not. It's not my land. It's the public right away, and they can be there. Uh, they are park at parks, these little areas. We probably should have done a better job. 
we can put something there that would be just as staffed and just as secure with set hours just for residents in any of those locations. So it is an excuse. I know that Jeff Rose emailed me like when we first got elected with a, a, a he literally included the link to a floating kayak launch that could have cost nothing and we could put it in right away. And I said to Tim, let's move it every week, every Sunday. Let's do it once a week on Sunday and it could be on a different street and every time just to give the residents something to do. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. Like there's these ideas and everybody says, oh, let's kick the can down the road. Nobody wanted, you know, the last mayor tried to put it in Point Lake. Nobody wanted it in Point Lake. Every, nobody wants the, what people in the water near them. It's got, you know, if residents want to have a kayak launch and they want to have kayaking, then the answer truly is to give everyone access so that they can go wherever they want. Then there's not congestion in one spot. But of course it would need to be <laughs> secure. It would need to be staffed. It would need to be have hours and all that other stuff. We just have to do this in a smart fashion. To lose 10 feet of the park, literally in a tiny park, to lose 10 feet of that, to have a tiny alley where you can get your kayak down. I, I mean, listen, if this is what the residents want to do, I'm not here to implement my own will. I'm here to do what the residents want. But I know that a lot of residents have contacted me that they don't want it in that location. Thank you. So. Thank you. Okay, well, we're just working it out, working the clock out. All right. Um, you know, I, I do think that the kayak uh, launch should go with the park. I agree with Tina. Uh, I think that uh, that that wall with the uh, crazy painting on it would be lovely, with lots of beautiful kayaks hanging on it. Uh, we could probably charge the residents a fee and offset some of the maintenance for keeping their kayaks there and lock them. I don't think anybody ought to be driving on Bay Drive. I don't. I think we ought to literally close that street to traffic and just allow people that live there to go in there and park their cars and. Anybody going to the park gets to walk. You know, you get to walk to the park, you get to bring your kayak, and uh, you don't drop your kids off at the park. You, you drop your kids off at uh, 95th Street, and uh, they walk to the park. And uh, that, that's, that's just my personal opinion. I think uh, with respect to the street ends, um, you know, we've, we've, we've sh shown a light on that, and it used to be that you could go to the street end and drop your kayak in, and and do fishing and fish off the kids go you know the neighborhood kids go and and you know we, we've we've overcomplicated it I mean I'm not listen if, if there's a kid dropping a, a, a kayak off at, the, at a street end one day and uh, he's not bothering anybody uh, I don't think even the residents would would mind but you know what I just don't think it can be official policy and I, I just you know but but I do think that you know we're a small town we want to accommodate our kids, especially our kids. We want to accommodate our families. And uh, I, I think the major focus, though, should be on get, at least getting it in the park now, getting, getting them hung up on the walls, um, giving people that really want access to the water access to the water. Um, you know, we've, we've, I think we've, we've got a direction on the park. I'm excited about, you know, uh, the way the park is, is unfolding. Uh, we're about to get a final design brought to the commission and we're going to make a decision. So that's all good news. Um, and, and, and quite frankly, this is the way the meeting should go. People get up, they give their opinion, they say what they want to say, the next person says what they want to say, they might say they disagree with the, the last person that talked, but you know what, it's not personal, it's not aggressive, it's not loud, and then we vote. That's it. We vote. We vote. All the acrimony, all the hate, all the anger, all that stuff, that's not something that's naturally part of my life, okay? And all the accusations. And listen, everybody's entitled to their facts. Listen, everybody can stand up and tell you that the sky is red and the water is green. It's all good, okay? But it doesn't have to be strident. It doesn't have to be accusatory. And we're just here to make progress. That's what we're here to do, okay? So that's, that's my three cents and my time is up. Okay. Mayor. So, Mayor. Uh, Mr. Rose, as a courtesy, as a personal courtesy, I'm going to give you one minute to respond. Okay. Mayor, if I may. You got the, emails to read too? I have one email that came in before the good and welfare was closed. All right. Well, Mr. Rose, come on up while you're, while you got it on your mind. And, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Appreciate welcome. that. Uh, much appreciated. Just real brief. Um, I, I understand everybody's concern. The people on the sky and the street ends don't want it there. The other people want, at the park don't want it there. <clears throat> I'm just in, I always look at things at the end. The reality is 
If you put it at the park, fine, but that's still 18 months at least away, and that's the whole thing that I was talking about. You're just punting for this commission. This commission is saying, yeah, we all want it, but it's not going to be a problem. The next commission is going to deal with it. And thank you, Tina, uh, Vice Mayor. I am probably going to be running, but that's besides the point. The, the reality is we're just punting the problem, and let's get a solution. Move it once a week for once a week. Let's just try and get it out. Commissioner Kessel, you said they're open. Mr. Burkett, I know you've lived here for many years, Mr. Mayor. The street ends, people, kids were dropping in all the time. Vice Mayor Paul, you grew up here. That's the whole thing. They're, they're, we don't want to call it, it's a bad word, but it's a pocket park. It's not technically a street end. It is technically a pocket park. Let the residents enjoy it. We all own it. Thank you. Go ahead, Sandra. This, this email came from Jordan, Jordan Washtel. I am wondering now that governor removed all restrictions, can we please get the pool opened full time with no restrictions and open the food bar? Thank you. Okay, Mr. Manager, is the uh, pool not open yet? Not yet. Okay, is there a plan? Mm. Microphone. Tim and I are talking about a plan. Right now we've kind of going with what the county's doing about certain uh, public locations, swimming pools, buildings, and things of that nature, but we are discussing it since this just came down last week. We're trying to get it to worked out in conjunction with the city attorney. Okay. Well, I understand that the county properties are, are have certain rules. Correct. There are certain the, rules. And our facility, is our facility a county facility? No, sir. Okay. So we would, we would make the rules for our facility? That is correct, sir. Okay. Lily, you're nodding your head yes? Okay. Um, Anybody want to make a motion on on how we would deal with the pool right no, now? We can't make okay, motions well, hang, hang, in hang the middle of good and welfare. Okay, hang, hang okay? on a second. We cannot make motions in the middle of good and welfare. It's not permitted. Stop order talking. in the court? Stop. Yeah, order in the court. Stop talking. Okay, we can make motions anytime we want. Okay, well, that's your opinion. Okay. Madam Attorney, Madam Attorney, would you opine on when motions? Yes. Can would be you made? like to add an item to the agenda to discuss the the park facilities? You can. Thank you. I have okay. a motion to add the okay. item. Okay. It can be done at, at this moment. Thank you. Okay. okay. May so. I, may I? Yeah. If I can. Uh, I I don't want to make a motion. I think um, you know I see that our parks and recreation director Tim Millian just walked in, and uh, he's I, you know during the whole COVID I worked with him a lot about the, uh, the opening of the pool. We were uh, in dialogue about that. And I, and I think, you know, uh, between Tim and the manager, they will reopen the pool as soon as possible. I don't know that we need to do a full-on motion for that. I think they have that under control and they have the residents' best interest. I just wanted to correct the record as far as um, when I spoke about the kayak launch, I, I did not speak about storage on the wall at 96th Street Park. I just want to be clear. That's your idea. I didn't, I didn't mention that. Okay. And I agree with that. I, I, I don't, but I mean, I didn't say it, so I just nope, wanted to be clear. I, I agree with that. I agree with that. Okay. Uh, we're up to uh, con consent agenda. Um, is there anyone that wants to move the consent agenda? Motion to approve. But does the uh, town manager need a um, direction okay. on opening the pool okay. or? Well, again, I asked for a motion to well, make, give I'm, him direction. I'd like to make a motion to give the town manager direction on whether he should open the pool or not. All right, let's see I think if our a residents second. need to be using the pool. Not everybody has a pool in town. And our children are coming out of uh, going on vacation next month. And they've already been locked up for a month, for, I'm sorry, for a year, over a year. It's only fair that they're able to use this pool that we all pay into with our property taxes or however you want to call it. But I think that it's time to let our residents use this pool and our children to enjoy what we purchased in Surfside because that community center is an important part of our town. And I think that we need to open that to every single resident whenever they want to come. Okay. And that's an important part of our town. And thank you very much, Jordan, for um, bringing that to the, the attention of this commission. Okay, there's a, there's a motion on the table. Is there a second? I'll pass the gavel to the vice mayor and second it for discussion purposes. Uh, who would like to go first? Me, I'd love to. Go ahead. Okay. The manager just sat here and said he didn't need direction. Okay. Tim and the manager have it under control to do this in a safe way, but yet you decided you wanted to tell them what to do anyway. So that's not our job, and it's certainly exactly. not our job to decide what health policy is for the town. We are following the county um, direction. 
Our pool has been open the entire time. It has been accessible all the time. Okay, that, I'm at that pool pretty much every day. It's empty half the time, and everyone can sign up whenever they want. There's no backlog. There's no one that ever said, hey, I can't get into the pool because it's, it's crowded. Any resident can get in there all year long. We have the, the play areas open. We have the slide area open. We have the kiddie pool area open. What we don't have open is a Petri dish. What we're trying to do is trying to maintain the social distancing. Like right now, for example, we are socially distancing, and we're wearing masks, right? Because even though Governor DeSantis decided, hey, COVID doesn't exist anymore, let's free for all, we've decided that in our facilities we want to be smart and we want to show courtesy to other residents. Not everybody is vaccinated. I am vaccinated, so it doesn't bother me, but I, don't, I know that there's other people in the community that are not vaccinated yet, and I would encourage everyone, by the way, to get vaccinated as soon as possible because our leadership is not going to protect you. You're going to need to protect yourself. So I am absolutely opposed to, I'm absolutely opposed to trying to fast track anything because we are not out of the woods by any sense of the mean. And, and in your opinion, I know the mayor has been, you know, plugging COVID conspiracy theories and his statistics and everything on Zoom all year long. And I'm not going to um, put the nail in the coffin. Uh, we're not out of this yet. Okay, so I think we should defer to the town manager, we should defer to Tim Million, who are taking steps to make it reopen safely, and everything will be open safely in the next month or two. But I'm not gonna say tomorrow morning, have at it, let's everyone infect each other, because we'll be the laughing stock of the entire state. All right, you have to respect the residents and their right to be healthy, their right to have distance. Okay, I know last time you said, oh, the kids, kids have not been locked up. The kids have been out running about, they've been in the parks, they've been in the pool. Nobody's been denied access. There's not an emergency here. So you want to kiss up to Governor DeSantis? Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, next speaker, please. Yes, Charles, this is a motion while you're away to uh, direct the, uh, the manager to uh, take whatever steps he need, deems reasonable to get the pool open. Um, I, I, uh, I'll share that. Um, I don't think that's necessary. I think the town manager would um, would just proceed diligently as he has so far. Um, the guidance that that, uh, that of how, in terms of how he's how he approaches things, I trust him. I don't think anything anything unusual is necessary. So um, so I wouldn't support that. And I, I um, and I do agree with what I heard the sentiment of Commissioner Salzauer that um, I think we're very fortunate to be here tonight. Um, and we're fortunate, you know. And I didn't want to give the wrong impression in the beginning. I have been vaccinated early on. Um, I creatively, because I'm an elected um, officer of the law, sworn to uphold the law, I saw myself <laughs> as, um, as eligible early on, um, and I used that, and I, was at, I went to the federal facility. So I've been vaccinated, and it's now been, I think, four weeks, because, um, yeah, it was in early April. So um, anyhow, the, that said, there are a lot of people that aren't vaccinated, and, and there could be changes to the strain, another strain shows up. So this, let's just get, continue to get to take care of this and, uh, and, and hang in there, go by the guidelines that the county has, is offering and the judgment of the town manager, which is good on many things, and uh, everything that I've seen so far. So, um, you know, and let's just remember to stay safe because we've been through this before where we, where we let loose, cut loose too early, and then it, it came back unexpectedly and we've had to deal with the pain since. So um, that's where I stand, but thanks to everybody for being pre uh, present tonight and safe. And I did want to say that that's why I hugged people in the beginning. And if the vice mayor chose not to hug me, I completely respect that because that's why we have these things up. And maybe she didn't want to hug me for other reasons, but I hope that that's why. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. I, I had taken my mask off. I didn't know you were trying to hug me. <laughs> <laughs> Tina, comment? I, I already spoke, um, but basically. Oh, you did? On yes. That? Uh, well, yes, because I believe the manager and Tim have this under control. I don't think. The motion's necessary. Okay. Um, All right. Well, then I haven't spoken yet. Um, I think the motion is necessary. I think uh, rather than following the county's direction, we would be following the state of Florida's direction. Um, with respect to the comment that we don't respect residents, um, those residents don't have to go to the pool. The residents that want to use the pool and their kids that want to use the pool can go to the pool if they want. People that are concerned about the COVID issue and aren't quite ready to go out and be active don't have to go. But that's the whole point of the matter. The whole point of the matter is, is you know, 
we need to start coming out of this thing. There were just some articles that said, and, and again, I was gonna look up that article, but uh, you know, the, the, the number of deaths uh, in the country, not just in Florida, have plummeted. And that means we're making progress and we're doing great. You know, half the population is vaccinated right now. So again, I don't, I don't think that, uh, and I don't think that the manager or Tim would do anything that would, uh, that would put our residents at risk. All we're saying is give them the ability to make decisions based on the best information they have. That's all. Okay, okay. so that's, that's all we're saying. Okay, now, um, there's a motion on the floor. I think that everybody has spoken. Is that, can any, anybody not get to speak? Okay, Madam Clerk, call the roll, please. Mayor, you have public speakers. All right. Horace? And what we'll do is we'll go for two minutes now and we'll see if that works, okay? Sure. Good evening, Why Horace Hunt. Why would we limit? Because it's getting late already. It's I know, already but 9 o'clock and we haven't even started the agenda. Okay, but that's okay. not. But you know fault. what? You're out of order. Go ahead. Thank you. I'll be less than a minute, Commissioner Salzauer, I promise. You can have three minutes, Horace. I'll be less than a minute. I would like you to have three and take what you want. No. Thank you. Horace Henderson, 9195, Collins Ave. Um, the state has opened all the condo pools per the employees of the town of Surfside and per what they sent me. Um, if the state has opened all the condo pools. Why would it make any kind of sense not to open the pool for the uh, for the community center? Um, it, it's as simple as that. I don't understand why um, the commission would go against what the governor has said and what clearly has been working in the state of Florida. Thank you. Okay, Joshua Epstein. Joshua Epstein, 917 Bay Drive. I don't understand um, if you guys understand what's going on, but he, uh, the town manager literally said that he already has that ability. There is no constraint on, uh, restraint on his ability right now. The pool has been open the entire time. I've been there probably almost every day since June. It's literally empty. You can go online right now, sign up your entire block, and you'll have room. The only thing that's going on right now is that it's one family per, um, per location and one family per lane. That's basic COVID guidelines. I know that you tried to cancel COVID a long time ago, but it is still a danger. We've been here before. There's no point of doing that. This is honestly, it seems to be, the, there's a motion with no consequences to it. They're already looking into it. it. All this would do would pressure them to open it before it's actually safe. The county has current guidelines in place. The county puts out guidelines relevant to our specific county rather than the entire state of Florida. That is what they are following. So to say that they should follow guidelines for the state of Florida when that our county knows what's best for our county best, then it's, that's ridiculous. Um, there is no point of this. And also I was kind of disgusted. I used, were given the speaker cards that said the item they wanted to speak on, looked at them, saw them, sorted through them, and then tried to go forward without public comment and Sandra had to interject and say, Mayor, there's public speakers. So I did not, I don't think that's cool that you looked at them and didn't do that. But there's no point of this motion. It's a waste of time. We've wasted a lot of time tonight, move on. It, it, there's no point of this and we ought to be safe and let them use their direction and use county guidelines rather than a bunch of people that don't really know what they're talking about or what they're doing trying to interject and place themselves where they have no business thank you thank you anybody else on the subject okay go ahead Jeffrey Platt 9225 Collins Avenue um, listen I'm all for getting over COVID at the right time I really am and, and, and I know, Mr. May, you've, you've talked about how many people have been vaccinated. But I think you failed to realize that here in Surfside, we have a particular situation. We have a huge percentage of our population who don't go to the beach, who only use the pool, and are not vaccinated. We have a huge percentage of people in Surfside who refuse to get vaccinated and they want to use the pool. I just want you to take that into consideration. Thank you. 
Anybody else? Jeff? Jeff Rose, 8851 Fratt Avenue. Initially, I was against opening the pool, but Mr. Henderson pretty much just nailed it. The condo pools are open. If they're open, the rest of the Surfside residents should be able to use the other pool that don't have pools in, the, in their backyard. Thank you. Thank you. I was looking for uh, the article I saw today. Is this a time, are you on a timer now? Oh, we each get to talk at the same amount of time. Yeah. Correct, so are you, this your time? Interrupted. Is this your time now? Usually you, you go last. Do we have to negotiate that? I thought okay. we were gonna go around, or we're done. Yeah. We're not we just done. call the vote? We're not done. We're not, we're not done. done. Okay. You want to get some bullshit statistics? I'm sorry? Go ahead. You want to get the science out, so go ahead. Yeah. The average daily U.S. COVID cases fall to fewer than 40,000 for the first time since September 15th, as average daily deaths fall to a low since July 6th of last year, which is good news. That's good news. I mean, in July of last year, we were raging with fear and problems. But anyway, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. This is on giving the manager the authority to act in his capacity. Okay, again. Commissioner Castle? No. Commissioner Salazar? No. Commissioner Velasquez? Yes. Vice Mayor Paul? The pool's already open, no. Mayor Burkett? The pool is, is already open with, with restrictions. Uh, Yes. Mayor, the motion fails. Okay. Is there a motion to move the consent agenda? Yes. Motion to um, approve uh, 3A. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second I'll that. Three. that. Okay. Seconded by Commissioner Kessel. Any discussion? All the roll, please. Commissioner Velasquez? Yes. Commissioner Salsauer? Yes. Commissioner Kessel? Yes. Vice Mayor Paul? Yes. Mayor Burkhead? Yes. Mayor, the motion carries. Okay, good. All right, next item, uh, resolutions and proclamations. Sandra, would you take us through the first one, please? Yes, Mayor. A resolution of the Town Commission of the Town of Surfside, Florida, approving a donation agreement with the with the Harold B. Gerald B. Kramer Family Foundation, Inc., providing for 100,000 donation for Town Tennis Center upgrades and additional tennis class expenditures, providing for authorization, providing for implementation, and providing for an effective date, item 5A. Is there a motion to move that? I'll gladly motion to move that. And so I'll gladly second that. Okay, any discussion? I would just like to um, th thank the Gerald B. Kramer Family Foundation for this generous donation to the Town Tennis Center. Okay, I would too. Me I too. would also like to thank them. That's very generous of them, and thank you very much for thinking of our town. Okay, anybody else? Yeah. Sure. Um, I do want to thank the family. That's really wonderful that they're doing that. I, when I first saw this, I got a little sad that, we, that our facilities looked like they needed donations. Um, so I do appreciate, this is great, this is wonderful. Um, I would love for our town to use the resources that we already have to keep our facilities looking amazing. And I would like to see, um, you know, make sure that our classes are kept subsidized for residents and maybe some scholarships for summer camps and things like that. But this is really generous and this is fantastic and we appreciate it. Um, that's it, so thanks. Okay, call the question, Madam Clerk. And Come in. Would I join if I say something, Mr. Mayor? Okay. Uh, thank you. This is amazing to me, um, and the most important thing to me is that out of all the options that this foundation has for donation, they would choose Surfside. I mean, and there are, there are places that have entire departments about trying to get them to commit money to things when, any, when, any, when anybody, anybody has money. And this is amazing, and I think it's a really good sign for our, our stewardship or direction steering the town because um, they must think it's a pretty good place and that it's under good leadership or they wouldn't choose that. So if I, if I was seeking validation, it's a little validation. Thanks. Okay. Call the question, please. Commissioner Salisauer? Yes. Commissioner Castle? Yes. Commissioner Velasquez? Yes. Thank you Vi very much. Vice Mayor Paul? Yes. And thank you again. Mayor Burkett? Yes. Mayor, the motion carries. Okay. Very good. Uh, 
Next item, please, Sandra. Item 5B, a resolution of the Town Commission of the Town of Surfside, Florida, declaring the town's commitment to cultivating an inclusive community to ensure the rights of all citizens will be protected and respected by condemning hate and extremism, providing for declarations and providing for an effective date, item 5B. Great, is there a motion to move this? I have a motion to approve. Okay, is there a second? I'll second it. Okay, discussion? Charles? Sure, um, would you guys mind telling me what page it's on really quickly? It's uh, page 146. I definitely support this in spirit. Um, what I would like to see is um, if the motion makers would continue or would, um, would consider this. Um, I think that I would like to see protection based on socioeconomic status um, and place of residence. Um, I think those are two very important things as we see in, that Miami has a, a growing separation uh, based on those factors. Um, and um, if you, you know, it's, it's, it's at least an idea, right? Um, but that's because that's where my, where my heart is. Um, you know, when you mentioned QAnon, um, I think that's probably not a good idea to be that specific. I would just say like misinterpretations of fair elections, uh, which is a very real danger in this country, which I can't believe that that's happened in my lifetime and never expected that. Um, because in reality, for me, it jeopardizes the very essence of democracy, the American way of life, our quality of life in Surfside. Um, I would also support uh, you know, free, uh, pr free expression as well as free assembly. Now, I would ask the town attorney if that's too broad um, of a, a word, but I think expression can hap it kind of broadens it because we see the variations in the way people express themselves in this room, and I think it's a, something that, that's a good thing and I like it actually, I like the diversity. Um, so that's what I have to have to say about this. Um, and also I think, um, whereas as elected leaders, the town commission, um, actually, whereas the diversity of our community is beneficial to all within it, making us stronger and more resilient, and it also promotes sustainability and it promotes peace, right? Um, um, it, and those, you know, you might say, oh, we just need a, a blanket kind of, everybody's everybody's protected, but um, lastly, I'll just, I'll just share that I am, Proud, um, well, proud's the wrong word, but I want to congratulate myself to um, to have supported the one about um, about a, uh, hate against Asians, which the vice mayor sponsored last year, um, and because and I think I might have seconded it because we've seen that happen. We see that happening now, and it, it's you know it arguably wasn't needed at that time, but it, sh it was the foresight to to see that that's happening, and it's sad, but I'm I'm you know. I am, I'm ha it's yeah, I'm happy, but if I, um, you know, if there's something that I did that's a resolution that I'm glad to have voted yes for that. Thanks. Okay, anybody else? Um, sure. Go so uh, thank you for that, uh, Commissioner Kessel. I would say that the resolution that I put forward a year ago about the hate against the Asians, it was happening then. It really was. I had a lot of articles that supported that. Yeah. So um, it just has escalated, but it, and in fact, I was just in New York City um, this past week, and, and I, I was in Times Square yesterday, and I saw, I mean, all you see there is um, wear a mask, vaccinate, and um, stop, the, uh, stop hate. So it, this is, it's big. It's, you know, it's really sad that it's come to this in our country. I would also like to add that um, similar resolutions to this have already passed in Bay Harbor Islands, Cooper City, Coral Springs, Hollandale Beach, Pembroke Pines, and Sunny Isles Beach, and I'm sure more have, more uh, municipalities have passed this. That's all I'm aware of as of the date of when I put this forward. Okay, anybody else? Go ahead. Um, thank you, Vice Mayor Paul, for bringing this resolution. This is absolutely important. It's timely. Unfortunately, it's timely. It's sad, really sad, uh, what's happened in this country. Um, over the past year, and it's happened, I guess, for generations probably as well, but it's people have gotten, I guess, bolder with the internet. So I 100% support it as is, and I appreciate that you brought it forward. Thanks. Okay. Yes, Dylan. <laughs> Thank you very much for bringing this to the commission. I don't know how factual all the statements made here are correct, 
but I stand 100% against hate and extremism. I don't know if this actually happens in our town. I have never been a victim of any kind of hate or anything like that in Surfside. I think we live in a beautiful place. Um, and I don't see our neighbors going around hating each other, but I do, st I do agree with this. And thank you for bringing that to the commission. Uh, I agree with it too. I think it's uh, it's incomplete, though. I, the same question I have uh, that I had last time is, uh, you know, we've got very specific uh, items here. We've got extremism. We've got white supremacy. We're 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 deploring racism, anti-Semitism, misogyny, Islamophobia, anti-LGBTQ, hate, ableism. But you've got other religions that are not there. You've got mm -hmm. Buddhism. Hinduism, atheists, and the largest community of all, which are the Christians. I would, you know, I'd love to see, I, I don't know why we're not more inclusive. That's, that's the question. So I'm going to vote for this tonight, but I'm going to bring back one that's more inclusive next month, and I hope you'll support that too. Um, Madam, is there anybody that wants to speak on this issue? Yeah, go ahead. Come in. Thank you, Joshua Epstein, 917 Bay Drive. I think I filled out a card earlier. Um, I want to say that I did think this was actually pretty inclusive. If you look at it, it does say, and all hateful speech and bias, um, bias motivated violent actions in our community. The way that a lot of these resolutions are worded is towards the most disenfranchised communities or towards the communities that need that extra attention to shine a spotlight on what is going on within their communities, which is why it's not just hate against everyone. Um, it, that obviously is included in here, all hateful speech, but I think it's important to shine a light upon their, the areas that need it most. I also think we ought to not only pass this, but we ought to look into this and why a lot of these events happened. I think if we look at the Capitol riots on January 6th, that was all because of that big lie that the election was stolen, lies that were spread over and over, and all of that hate that was, all of that hate that was continuously, um, I guess, riled up throughout that presidency of just lies, lies, lies. So I think we ought to look inside Surfside and see who, if we're lying to residents, if this could happen to us, because if we continue to lie, it, there really is no, there's no boundaries to where that can take us. There's no boundaries to where that will go. And I think that's what we saw um, during the Capitol riots. I also don't think it's good that we also, I mean, we had COVID conspiracy theories. We had some of those, some people that were being tweeted on the mayor's Facebook page. They were also posting some other pretty crazy stuff. So I don't think that it helps. And I think obviously we ought to take a look at that Gazette because I know personally we had a watch order on our house because there were people that I think threatened um, my family because the mayor had put something out about that Commissioner Saul's how I wanted to defund the police, which was not true, never supported anywhere. It was the most ridiculous claim ever. But it, it, was, it happened because it's a lie. People believe it because people in power, they think they're gonna tell the truth to them, but when they don't, it has real consequences. So I think we need to look at those real consequences and see what we can do to prevent something like this and from happening in our own town in Surfside. Because it, it, we didn't think it was gonna happen to the US Capitol, but it really can happen here too if we continue to allow lies just to spread. Thank you. The fact of the matter is, is that that information is not accurate. Okay, you want to call the question? Oh, you got to, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, Horace. Good evening, Horace Henderson, 9195 Collins Ave. Um, I do agree that there is plenty of hate in the nation. Um, I think that is unequivocal. Um, I think it's also very clear with what we've witnessed here tonight and every commission meeting that there's plenty of hate coming from Commissioner Salzauer and facilitated by Vice Mayor Paul. Um, I think that that needs to be toned down and that people need to be more willing to work together and understand that when people are discussing something like this, that you do need to include everybody. And it's simply that. There should be no hate. End of story. You should not name anybody. And as I've told all of you, I have a transgender son. So I believe me, I'm, I'm right there with everybody that that should be part of that. But it should stop at there should be no hate. End of story, full stop. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? You had? OK. Yes, sir. Give us your name and uh, address, please. 
Ellie Boyle Green, 9173 Carlisle Avenue. Um, this just uh, bearing witness to some things that we do have in town. Um, while I do find the town is very peaceful and inclusive, and, and that is beautiful, and like you said, represents uh, everybody here in the room. Um, but there are instances in town, and there are people all over the world and everywhere that that do uh, that do hate and aren't afraid to to bring that out. And I applaud um, uh, the vice mayor for bringing it up. Personally, I have a neighbor who has called my kids uh, "dirty Jew monkey," my six-year-old kids from next door when they were playing outside during the day in normal hours. Um, so there are, you know, kind of we've gotten to points where I had to call the cops on him for, for cursing it. I don't, I don't even understand how somebody does that. Um, so there is, you know, um, these types of instances, and I, I, it is something that I find is very, uh, um, you know, happy that it's, that it's being uh, put forward as a resolution. So thank you very much. Thank you very much for those thoughts. Anybody else? Yes, go ahead. Um, thank you for those comments. I, I agree with the resolution the way it, the way it's written, and I think that to say that there's no discrimination in this town because we personally have not been discriminated against is not the barometer, unfortunately. We have had residents at prior meetings, unfortunately, who came forward and had to talk about some painful situations that they have had where they were made to feel very uncomfortable in their own town, on their own front lawn, in their own home, and that's not, that's not okay. So I don't think that there needs to be a resolution that says there should be no hate. That doesn't have any, uh, of course there shouldn't be hate, but there, are, but there are people out there who hate and those haters deserve to be hated, okay? So it's not like, oh, let's protect QAnon conspiracy theorists from any discrimination. Like, no, they, they, this is what they get. So I don't believe that, um, I, I believe that there are segments of the community that need special protection um, and that are discriminated against. And so that's why this is, you know, I hate to do this deja vu thing again where the mayor next month is going to bring back his version protecting like the KKK or something, thank or you. I don't know. Thank but you. it's you know, really that, not a road we need you. to go down. Let's thank just you. pass this the way it is. Thank you. Protecting the KKK. Very nice, Commissioner. Uh, let's call the question. Uh, I, I'd just like to say something. Yes, go ahead. Okay. I, I'd like to thank Mr. Bowman Green for coming forward with that, and I'm very sorry that it's happening to your children. That shouldn't happen to young children, but, I, you know, I, I know the situation. I've been in that situation, too, as a child, uh, not necessarily based on religion, but just for whatever reasons, people want to be bullies. Um, Mayor, the reason that it doesn't have religions, because it, it, there are no religions mentioned in there, I do think this is quite inclusive, so I'm satisfied with uh, the way it's written also. Um, there, there are. It's, Islam is in there. It's Judaism about race. Is it's, more, it's race. It's, it, Islamophobia is a religion. It's a phobia against religion. Anti-Semitism is a phobia against Judaism. And what happens to them is very real. We just heard from I someone. Didn't, but that's not what you just said before that. You said there were no religions in there. So okay. Yeah. Was my okay, call the roll, please. Commissioner Kessel? Yes. Commissioner Velasquez? Yes. Commissioner Salasauer? Yes. Vice Mayor Paul? Yes. Mayor Burkett? Yes. Mayor, the motion carries. Okay. Now we are up to item 9A, which is amending the town code conduct of meetings. Mayor, if I may? Yes. I would like to put it on the screen since we actually yeah. sent out the correct version today to the members Thank of the commission. You. Just so that I want to make sure yeah, that it's clear. I'd like to start with uh, Jose, um, the mayor's page of the genesis of this idea back in uh, April of 2020. That's, that's not it. Um, there's another one. It has, it says Mr. Mayor's Mr. page. Mr. Mayor, if I may. Yeah. Um, I hadn't had a chance to read emails today, so if things were changed, I these would. These were not changed. Okay. Yeah, this is, this is changed. It, oh, it, was, it was in the previous agenda, Commissioner, and it's actually on the day as we printed copies for everyone. And, and by the way, we're just going to talk through it. If you don't want to support it or vote for it, it's okay. I mean, gotcha. It's just a work I, in progress. I, I just know that I haven't had a chance to review it. It's the one from the April time. agenda. Okay, Commissioner Salsauer, you raise your hand if you want to be recognized, okay? 
No. Jose, what do you mean no? um, it's, it's, this, uh, it's this one that says Mayor's Page. I'm going to do a presentation, and then you can talk Mayor, can after. I see it? Okay. Mayor? Yeah. Can I see it so that I could send it yeah. to them? Yeah. We need to clarify to the residents that they're seeing what was in the April agenda because the May one had the wrong material in it. Yes. So anyone at home, if you want to be following along, look at the April agenda, that item. That's exactly what's here because the residents at home didn't get a copy of this or an email. Commissioner Salzauer, when you are the mayor, you'll run the meetings. Okay. I'll need that back, Sandra, so I can. Okay, so I can. Follow. I'm glad I picked a good a good seat for the presentation. So I, I didn't even think it. about it. I can't see it, but maybe you know, Jose, you can enlarge it. I mean, so folks can can see it, but uh, it's not going to be too much. Yeah. What's your question? The version that you used to make your changes to was the draft. You okay, well let me let me let me just explain so everybody knows what happened, okay? And then it then it will be clear. Okay? That's it. Okay, so let's start there. Um what's on what's on the screen that we have yeah, in our hand? Yeah. No, that 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 this is just a summary here. Okay, this is, this is how it started, okay? And what we had was we had, some, we had some changes that were made over the last 10 years. So, so hurry on. This presentation was not s distributed. Listen, to Commissioner, if you, you, you know. We have a rule I, I, that you okay. have to submit presentations. Stop talking. Stop talking. Please. We have a rule Just that you have to submit again. presentations, and you didn't. What? Thank you for that comment. You're noted. Okay, so roll down, please. Okay, so this is how it worked. The first step was to propose a change in an ordinance which allowed Surfside's residents to speak freely at the meetings. Keep going down. You're slandering the former mayor. Okay. Again, you, you're still interrupting. Stop. Keep going. This is the, this is the ordinance that was passed in, the, in, the, in probably five or six years ago. The second step that happened in the ordinance, keep going down. was that we deleted the public comment on agenda items. Keep going down. The, the take the, the, the scratched out information there says the public comment on agenda items portion of the meeting shall be restricted to discussion on agenda items which are not scheduled for public hearing. Each speaker shall be given no more than three minutes to address the agenda unless by a vote of the majority of the commission. It is agreed, unless it is agreed to extend the time. Keep going down. It was changed on line 371 from citizens' presentations. Any citizen shall be entitled was taken out and was changed to may request. Okay, the next, uh, keep scrolling down. The last part was when it comes to uh, lobbyists. Uh, regarding lobbyists that are speaking on behalf of someone, uh, what was taken out was that uh, shall state for the record any compensation that they're receiving, whether the person or any immediate family member has a personal financial interest in the pending matter other than set forth. So what happened was the law was changed to where people had a right to speak at meetings to where they may have a right. That was something that I saw, okay, we can go to the next one. Wait, that, minutes, is there a timer? Listen, Salzauer, what? stop talking, stop talking, stop you talking. You can't just talk endlessly at a meeting. Talking about his I'm making He's a presentation. Running, it's, it's this is like what you no, 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 no. But I submitted mine in advance and disseminated it to everyone. Stop, stop. It's not on the agenda, Nelly. Nelly, Nelly. Nelly. No, what he just showed is not. It is not on the agenda. It's not on the agenda, Charlie. I want to hear what you're saying. 
Now, does it I say know. anything about Daniel Deitch well, in here? I want to hear what he's saying. Great. So get coffee with him. I will. <laughs> right. Okay. So. It's very distracting, you know. It's very distracting. All you have to here do is submit here, it ahead here we, of time. Here we go. Listen, all you have to do is stop destroying the meetings. You are destroying okay? the decorum of the meeting by trying to submit whatever, doing whatever you want. Mm -hmm. We have a format where you have to disseminate the information you're going to present ahead of time at the meeting. We had a, a rule, we voted on it, and you're supposed to, within 48 hours, give it to everybody else. You Can need to stop. Just, you need, wait, just, hang on a second. I would like to make a motion to take that decorum that you're talking about out. I mean, oh, do you know how many oh, problems we've had here, oh, oh. Charles, because of that core? Nelly, you're not helping. Okay? This item is on the agenda. It's the next item. Okay? The presentation is about to begin. Okay. The, the, uh, the items that are going to be addressed, let's go to the next slide, please. The next slide. It's the next uh, document. It's an email that was sent to uh, Sandra and circulated to all the commissioners. Not that one. No, there's another one. Okay, well, I'm gonna read it if you don't have it. The first, go back, go back to the uh, ordinance, please. Okay, so what we have here is we had the ordinance that I sent back in April of last year with my changes. So let's go back to the top and go, go to line 75, rather, which is near the top. Seventy-five. Okay, now the first stop right there. The first thing that happened were all instances of mayor were capitalized. Grammatically incorrect. Next, line 75. So, what this is, is it allowed for an extension of the meetings beyond 11 o'clock only for emergencies. We promised, I promised, I think everybody else promised, that we weren't going to have meetings that went to 2.30 in the morning. We were going to try to get through the meetings, and that's what this says, okay? It just says, unless there's an emergency, you can't, you can't, let me just pull out the, uh, the text too because I want to be reading that along with you. That's too far for me to read. Unless there's an emergency, the meetings will not go beyond 11 o'clock unless there is a vote by the majority of the members present to agree to extend the meeting beyond that time. So generally the meetings will stop at 11 o'clock, which I think we've been adhering to anyway. Next one is line 91. Why don't we just talk about each one of these one at a time? You know, because I'm making a presentation. Without notice. You know, Salsauer. Burkett. You need to just really control yourself. It's, got, it's getting very tiresome. Okay, line number 91. talking about special meetings. The clerk shall forthwith serve either verbal or written notice upon each member of the commission of the starting date, place, and hour and purpose of such meeting, and no other business shall be transaction, transacted. Other than that described in the notice is what, I, is what I added. At least 20, okay, Mr. Platt. We're doing a presentation here. Don't need you talking. You want, do, you, do you want to have me take you, take you out? Do you want to go out? I didn't hear what you said. You were talking. We are trying to do a presentation. I didn't know that there was a fire drill that you can't say anything. Okay. You're disturbing the meeting, okay? No, no, I'm hearing you talk, he's hearing you talk, and it's disturbing. Okay. So what that is, is that's talking about the notices for special meetings will be very specific about what's going to be in the special meeting. The next item is on line 101. And 
that's the same thing for emergency meetings. There will be specificity with respect to what's going to happen with the emergency meetings. The next one is line 253. Go to that. Scroll down to 253. Actually, it looks like 254, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay. Participation by physically absent member of the town commission or board or committee shall be permitted. Okay, so that was, that was even before we had Zoom, I think. But I thought that, you know, if you've got a commissioner that's out for some reason and can attend by telephone and can vote, I thought that was helpful. Now, I didn't, um, I didn't add that. I said that the, the board members, the town board or committee members don't have that uh, option and that's up for negotiation. I just thought it was better if the town commission, that way we could get meetings done. If there was one or two commissioners that were out, they could still participate. That was the idea behind that. The next item is on line 285, talking about uh, good and welfare. And you know what? The reason I'm a little confused here is because I'm looking at Second, 285. Everybody's got a supplement. Okay, so what it used to say was the public comment on agenda items portion of the meeting shall be restricted to discussion items which are not scheduled for public hearing. Okay. I said, I added, shall not be restricted. So if people want to come and talk about something they feel strongly about, they should be allowed to talk about it. Each speaker shall be given, it used to say, no more than three minutes for good and welfare. Okay, so I said three minutes to speak and shall try to end on time as a courtesy to residents also wishing to speak. Now, it used to say, no more than three minutes to address the agenda unless by a vote of the majority of the members of the commission. So that was changed to have no restriction. The next one is line 370. I'm expecting we're gonna have equal time to respond. You're gonna have three minutes. No, I'm gonna have 20 minutes as long as you're taking. You know, Commissioner. You know, Mr. Burkett. Here, here's the thing. When you made your presentation, do you remember the presentation? It was on the agenda oh, and it was oh, distributed oh. ahead of no, time. No, no, this on. was not. Uh, motion for a break. Motion for a five minute recess. Amen. I second that motion. Okay, yeah, do that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Five minutes.
Yeah. Okay, you're going to talk. Yeah. Good. I would have talked on the other side, but, Oof. you know, it just kept on going. Yeah. We will, uh, we will keep going. Okay, we're getting started. Okay, folks, we're going to start again. Can you uh, ask the commissioners to come in, please? Okay, I think we're... Uh, Back on TV, folks. We're going to get started again. Okay. Jose, let's go to, okay, we're on line 370. No, that's all right. I'm just, we're just getting prepared. Is everybody back? Charles, Ellie, the vice mayor. Okay. Okay, we're up to uh, line 370, which removes the restriction and allows residents an entitlement to be placed on the agenda, and it removes other restrictions. That was the change. Line 387. removes the requirements that all speakers must register to speak and instead encourages speakers to register. So if someone doesn't happen to be registered or doesn't get their card filled out, they still are entitled to speak. Line 417. And this is a big one. And this is how I felt back in April. I'm not sure I feel like this right now, but I, I think I'll stand by it. It removes the restriction on making impertinent comments as defining as the definition of same is subjective. Okay, so one person's impertinent comment might be another person's very important comment. So I think impertinent as a standard is bad, but slanderous is probably okay to leave in. The next line is line 422. It restores the ability for residents to clap and applaud. If you all recall, for the last 10 years, we had the mayor and he had happy hands or something. He said that whenever you felt like you wanted to show approval, you had a happy hands. So I don't think it's, uh, I don't think it's a bad idea for people to be able to show that they support something or that they disapprove of something. Line 423. Removes the restriction on signs and placards. So if you had a sign or a placard that you wanted to hold up, as long as it wasn't slanderous or any other prohibited item in the code, which is really just uh, slanderous, warning behavior, let's see, what other, boisterous was taken out also, by the way. So, I mean, if someone wants to be boisterous, we just ask them to be respectful. Line 438, removes additional speech restrictions specifically, and I've got to remember what it says, 438, let me see, because this was a year ago. It's taken this long to get this item on the agenda. Uh, it used to say every member desiring to speak for any purpose shall address the presiding officer and upon recognition shall be confined to the question under debate, avoiding all personalities in indecorous language. So. That, was, that part was taken out, the confined part, and people can get to speak and say what they want to say. So that is, uh, those were my suggestions back in April. 
I'm open if someone's got a better idea. We just want to improve it and make the meetings more productive. Okay, who would like to go first? Yes, go ahead. Okay. You have so, three minutes. So thank you. Um, we're gonna probably do a couple rounds on this um, for that presentation that you clearly haven't looked at in a long time. So I've been poring over this carefully for the past two months because the changes in here are very significant. And I think the first line um, sort of explains why any of these changes were made. All instances of mayor were capitalized. Now, capitalizing the word mayor is actually grammatically incorrect, so that's a no. Unless it's the name of a mayor, um, like Mayor Paul or Mayor Burkett or whatever, then, then you would use it. So that's a no for grammatical reasons. We don't really want to be the laughing stock of uh, uh, you know, people who don't know how to spell. So that's a no. The other thing is it sums up, all this is is a, is a real, honestly, it's just a grab for more power. You added the ability for you to call meetings, for you to do this, for you to do that. The mayor can do this, the mayor can do that, so that you don't need the majority of the commission to do anything. That's not okay. You're not, you're not freeing up resident speech when you're actually limiting it. And what's frustrating for me to sit here and listen to is that even in your own explanation, again, I don't know whether you really believe what you're saying or, or you're deliberately misrepresenting what you're doing. These changes that you're making are not freeing speech, they are limiting resident speech, because before everyone was allowed three minutes, plus they can ask for more time and get more time. That's the way it's written currently, that's the way it needs to stay. What you're saying is, oh, I'm making it three minutes, you're removing the ability to, for a person to get more time, so you're actually restricting speech. The reason why you're supposed to speak on the agenda items with, during the agenda items and on good and welfare, good and welfare, there's specific thing, different topics because, and this again, this, is, this goes to the core of our difference in how we're supposed to be, I guess, governing here. An agenda item is supposed to be a legitimate real-time discussion where you're saying something, you're talking to your fellow commissioners, you're listening to them, you're listening to the residents, and you're making a decision. You don't come in here with your, with your mind already made up and you're gonna vote how you wanna vote. Otherwise, you're just, it's a, it's a fraud basically by doing it that way. And so that is why you're supposed to talk on commission agenda items during the agenda items and get three minutes and then you have a separate three minutes for good and welfare. And good and welfare should specifically be about things that are not on the agenda because that gives them the ability to talk about things that we haven't talked about yet. And then the pr correct procedure is, oh, that's a great idea. Let's add that discussion item to next month's agenda. And that's how it's supposed to work. It's not supposed to work where, oh, what a great idea. Let's vote on that right now. That's not how government is run because then there isn't public notice in the true sense of the word. I understand that, yes, legally, Lily says you can add whatever you want, but that's not the, the, the spirit is that you're being open to the residents and saying, hey, next month we're gonna talk about something, so come on in if you have an opportunity to talk about it, not sliding these things in. So that's just another example. There's a couple of things here. For example, the, um, I, and I think it should say that people are allowed three minutes for good and welfare and three minutes on every agenda item and they can ask for more time. I think that presentations by residents are at the discretion of the of you know the the commission or the Thank town manager so that it's I'm, I Thank have a you. lot more to say. There's a yeah, lot of items that's here. That's great. You got three minutes. Who's okay, next? we'll go it again. Who wants to go next? Charles. I'll go next. Um, uh, I do have um, you have integrated ideas that I think are important too. Um, it was hard for me to follow um, anything that doesn't have kind of clear definition. Just as with the zoning code meeting. Like if the, these are the issues, and then this is the change, and be, given that there are different drafts floating around, it's not helpful to me. I get overwhelmed, and, and, and that's you know that's regardless of content. Um, so I'll just give overall impression and feedback um, for for you to consider, Mr. Mayor, if you if you want to bring it back, or or if we want to take make make a motion or something. Um, I um, I don't like. Um, I think that Commissioner Salzauer is is probably correct with the capital M issue. Um, and um, I, uh, I do think that we are actually in alignment and making an effort towards not limiting free speech. But I'd like to come up with some balance so that we maintain open speech, but we can run meetings that are efficient. Um, and just because we have three minutes doesn't mean, we, it doesn't mean that we need to use three minutes. So I, I don't like it when we use the timer and everybody wants to, the banking time stuff, that got really confusing. Um, so generally speaking, um, I'm open to this, um, but there are a couple things that I'm, or I'll, generally speaking, there are things that I'm, I'm totally not open to, and that is um, taking away any kind of um, decision, or changing the decision making that's in place now that, that really prioritizes the town manager 
making the decisions of perhaps when meetings are held. Um, um, I definitely wouldn't use, if there is an emergency after 11, because then we have a, def that complicates it, we have to qualify then what's an emergency and what's not. Sometimes we may just want to stay to take care of business that, that is significant. So I think we've done there when we stay past 11. Um, but Mr. Mayor, you hit the nail on the head when this, to me, is not an issue of uh, free speech. Especially with discussion items, I think people should, should uh, voice their opinions for sure, and we should all have optimally the maximum amount of time, but we have to be efficient. Discussion items, people can communicate with us in many different ways. Um, people can communicate before the meetings, which I love. They can communicate afterwards, directly by phone, by email, during my open office hour. Um, but we have to have decorum and organization. So Thank that you. I support. Just Thank tonight, you. it's hard to do. No, that's all right. Listen, it's for discussion. Next comment, Vice Mayor. OK, uh, I had stepped out when you first showed the screen, so I'm not sure what you had on there. Um, I read this version that we got in the email this afternoon. That's the one I read. So what you have uh, on the desk, too? Uh, uh, as, well, OK, I don't know. It looks different there. That's why I opened up the, the one I read. Uh, I mean, I've read this thing 100 times, because I, re I read it you know, a year ago. I, I've read it, I read it when we first passed it. I, I've read it so many times. Um, the only thing I'm, I really would change, I, I'm not for, in favor of changing any of this, really, because you do need decorum. Uh, the only thing I would change is on, um, I guess it's, well, it's on the email version. I don't know if this is the same. It's page 7 of 15 uh, lines. What line? Uh, 253, uh, rule 6.03, because um, that needs to apply to town boards and committees. I mean, they're volunteers. Uh, especially with COVID, some of them don't want to come in person, and, and I don't see why uh, we would, the commission okay. would be able to participate um, virtually and the boards and committees wouldn't. And I also feel that the presiding officer should be present, present to uh, preside, not to do that virtually either. So um, that's the only change here that I'm really willing to for accept. For the boards? Presiding officer for the Same. boards? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If they're not there, if they're not there, then you, you, that's, that's the fine. reason you have a vice chair, so the vice okay. chair can preside. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Nelly. Yeah. I mean, I mean, oh, unless I'm we sorry. go, no, unless you go line by line, I mean, I could well, give you my reasons why. No, no. I listen, don't listen. You know what this things. is? The, the 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 intention was to broaden. I mean, we came into office. We didn't. I didn't like the jazz hands. I didn't like the speech restrictions. And that was the idea here. Now, obviously, the capitalization of the mayor means zero to me. Zero. Zero. It's number one on your list. It's the first thing that I did. Go ahead. Uh, but there, there were no speech limitations. The jazz hands was true, but there were no there, limitations. Well, jazz hands were ridiculous. Uh, on the previous commission, everyone was allowed to speak for three minutes. Go ahead. OK, on this, I, there's things that I do agree on. I read this about a year ago. Um, I, didn't get to read this again today. Um, so I agree on the things that uh, Charles and Tina have mentioned. Um, I do agree that um, it should be the three minutes and then that the commission has the right to award additional time, which is what we've always done when a resident needs to speak more than what they've actually spoken at that moment. Um, and in other things, I think that we should probably put this one off till next month so we can all carefully read this and uh, draw our opinions and um, bring to the table something that's, um, that is definitely not going to suppress anyone's speech as all residents should have the right to say whatever they want, um, especially during um, good and welfare and speak on the subject that is being uh, brought to the table at the moment that it is. So that's all I have to say. Okay, so now we've gone, everybody's talked. So let's, maybe we can fix the three things that we talked about and move on tonight. You know, and what'll happen is maybe I'll bring it back again with some other suggestions. And I mean, you all are welcome to bring anything back that you want. I see your hand, but that means we're gonna go around again and I don't know if we're gonna go around again. So since I made the motion, I'm asking, or is there anything that we can do tonight? Um, I don't think so, not oh. from my perspective. Okay. Um, I would like one minute each if you're cool with that. All right, yeah, let's do that. Go ahead, Eliana, one minute. Okay, thank you. Um, I, the prior commission, 
for all their faults or whatever, they did not infringe on speech whatsoever, and I am case number one because I am the most annoying speaker at every meeting for a couple of years there. And I talked my full amount of time. No one cut me off. No one was rude. I never got escorted out. There were absolutely no restrictions on speech with the prior administration. So anyone who says otherwise is misrepresenting how it was. And if anyone would know, it was me. Um, so that's first of all. I think that everything in the current way that we have the rules, it didn't, it didn't need fixing. There's nothing here to fix. The only thing that what you were trying to do is give yourself more power, letting yourself call special meetings, capitalizing your name, like that's important to you. Uh, like your name's uh, mayor, which it isn't, and now you're saying it wasn't important, then why did you put it there as your first thing? It says, my significant changes are as follows. You use the word significant, and your first thing was capitalizing your name. So that's exactly what this is. Don't try to pretend it's about the residents. I do think that, I, you know, I'm not really, the problem with doing, letting people um, participate by Zoom is that we're going to have, a, physically sorry. we need to have Thank a quorum you. present, Thank legally you, according to the state, and the presiding officer has to be there physically. Thank you. Okay. Well, you're Thank a judge you. now, too? And, and uh, I, I do. Well, I have to. I have to because you won't stop. See, I, I regret you having to do that. Go ahead, Charles. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, that I, I have the floor for one minute. Um, so I do agree that things that change the, um, the kind of weight of decision making, too, uh, you know, where it went down to 60% from like a supermajority. It's, it's interesting because each of us is 20%. So the only way to have a supermajority is to get four out of the five, right? Um, so I would, I would leave that language because it gets kind of complicated when, when the, the, the privileges of who does what is changing. Um, and, uh, but I really wanted this extra minute to say um, I think that each committee should, should, should prepare a vision statement as well as a mission statement. Um, the vision is the bigger picture long term, which we need to think more about, and, um, and then bring it to the commission um, for approval or feedback um, and, as well as the mission statement. And then that really would clarify what the mission is. And I also want to just say that as liaison to the DVAC, the Downtown Vision Advisory Committee, um, it's, I didn't really know clearly that it was my responsibility to bring like courses of action to, that, to there. I thought anybody could kind of pick it up. But talking with to the town manager, he wasn't too, too clear either, but that's what I'm doing now. Thanks, Charles. Next person. Um, sure. Go ahead. I, I just want to say, um, the mayor is the presiding officer, so basically um, these are your rules. Uh, you're already governing how you see fit on this board, and uh, I see no need to change these rules. I'm fine with the way they are, except for uh, just to amend rule 6.03 for the because of the COVID and the in-person situation. Okay, Nellie. Last year, I recall calling Sandra and asking her, how do I get a special meeting on the calendar? And I recall her telling me that the only way to get a special meeting on the calendar was to ask the town manager or have the mayor call a special meeting. So that was already in the rules of how we conduct meetings in our town. So how we say that this is being changed to get your ability to do it is wrong. It is a change. It's a change. Sandra, it's did change. we not have this last year in, in this? I'm sorry that I called on Listen. you in a moment that, um, do you the remember The way to call a special meeting is the manager could call a special meeting of, Lily, I'm not reading the rules, but just to confirm, or three members, the majority of the commission can call. The okay. mayor can call an emergency meeting. Okay. Uh, or emergency right. meeting. So okay. look, folks, I'll take my one minute now. The, the capitalization of the mayor is, a silly, is silly. It wasn't, it doesn't give me any more power and it doesn't mean anything. And I think the implication that it somehow does is silly. Uh, the, uh, there were, material changes in here that I thought would be helpful. I think I agree with Tina, that's fine. It, I would definitely support tonight uh, making those, those attendance options, uh, those attendance uh, when they're not able to attend, optional by phone. I think there's, a, there's an item here on line 290, it said, it used to say good and welfare starts at 815 and shall be restricted 
to discussions not already specifically scheduled on the agenda. In no event shall that portion of the meeting go for more than 45 minutes. I took that out. I took that out. Because if good and welfare was limited to 45 minutes, that means that maybe there's some people that don't get to talk. But you know, those were the kinds of things that I saw, and those were the kinds of things that I did. But listen, we'll move along. I don't think there's any support to uh, address this item, and that's quite all right with me because it doesn't, uh, it doesn't really affect me one way or the other. Okay. Well, can we move it to next month? Um, I, would, I, I mean, listen, you'd have to have a motion to do that because quite I'd frankly. Like make, I'd like to make a motion to move it to next month. Is there a second for that? No. So that uh, will move good on. I think there's things on here, but okay. But it's, listen, again, as, as things go in this town, this is a very minor issue. It was a housekeeping issue, and it's all right. We got bigger fish to fry. Okay, the next thing is is uh, item B. On that item, yes, you're right. Okay. Did anyone fill out a card or want to speak? Okay. I don't think was it a discussion? Was there a motion and a second? I don't think it was discussion. Was there? There was a lot of discussion. That was the one where, I, where you were screaming and yelling about my presentation and how you wanted the same amount of time. Yeah, but you never made a You're motion right? after okay. that. Go ahead, uh, Sandra. Yeah, Mayor, item 9 didn't have a motion or a second, just Commissioner Velasquez would. Okay, and that's fine. Done. That's fine, but the, but the issue is, is that I made the presentation, we had a discussion, there wasn't a motion, okay? So there really wasn't, the thing will be retired. All right, I think we're up to 9B, is that right? Now, I know we consolidated some stuff, but are we going on the, uh, does anybody remember what the? Yeah, yes. B was one of the consolidated. Okay. Yeah, in this one, I can, um, I can provide some quick context for that discussion and then just make a couple recommendations based on my conversations with the town employees and leaders. All right. If possible. Um, so thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so we're at page 168 and um, you know, leading DVAC, one, and every, as everyone knows, the um, uh, for the Surfside Business, business District. Um, first thing, you know, I like to think creatively about how the business owners can get the people that are the primary customers parking spots and easy access to the stores, whether you're selling silver or flowers or suits or many things, especially on the east side of Harding, um, you need your clients to be able to park and access, especially if things are heavy or can get dirty on the way back to a parking spot when it's raining or there's puddles or whatever, um, that risk, as well as all the convenience factors. Um, the town system, as well as competing systems in the market, including um, uh, the Miami Beach one that's, that's uh, that's you know, pretty much just only just only used in Miami Beach, but also the common one that's used in, in uh, the county that, that we have, um, park by phone, all that stuff. I, sorry, I get mixed up in the names, but the point is none of them actually can do a digital um, parking um, uh, kind of authorization. It's quite shocking, um, and I have great respect for the parking uh, enforcement team now that I understand that they're they're actually monitoring. Um, the maximum time limits with the chalk system that was back in the 80s and the 90s and that now it turns out the 2020s. Um, so they're chalking tires and, um, and that's really hard to maintain. And that's also how they, how they keep an eye on all of the, um, the Surfside stickers in the windows. I thought that we had some kind of, that as they went around, there were license plates being scanned or something, but nothing's like that's happening. The system is really built through the county in terms of how the tickets are done. Um, so it's challenging to, uh, to create a lot of um, a system by which we could do, you know, hey, you can, uh, we can authorize a promotion where, you know, dur you know, coming to these certain restaurants or this segment or all downtown businesses um, during this time, you can get a free parking voucher for a couple hours or an hour. It's just impossible. That said, the main thing that's the problem right now that we can take action on now um, is um, there's the construction parking for Bell Harbor, uh, for, for, for Bell Harbor construction workers where they're taking up the Abbott lot. And, um, and the th only thing that's gonna stop them 
is, um, is if we again lower the, um, the maximum during the daytime, the construction hours, uh, worker hours for like, which is seven to three or thereabouts, or even an eight or a nine to five, would kill their parking there because it's, we would drop it from four hours maximum, which we increased it to when it was slow under COVID, back to the two hours or even three. But back to two hours would mean they would have to move their cars every two hours. And so it then becomes kind of self, a self-enforcement tool where they're not gonna go there because it's too inconvenient. Um, and I, I propose key, uh, you know, matching the, um, the 94th Street lot at 94th and Harding um, to those same hours, which, um, which just keeps it simple. And then when there's construction starting with the Eden Project, we don't have to worry about that issue either. Um, and um, that's the main gist of it um, in terms of what we can do now. And the parking department for, uh, supports that. Um, they agree based on my conversation with, um, um, wow, I'm very, it's, I'm, that's a hard name for me to remember. <laughs> hey man, <laughs> can, you, can you introduce yourself? Yes. Sorry, Eleanor. For some reason, I keep forgetting your name. This is Eleanor Joseph, who's in charge of parking, um, parking enforcement. So um, the other thing that I just want to mention that was, seemed to be a big hit with the internal discussions is the notion of promoting the, the uh, downtown businesses through geofencing. And geofencing campaign is a very simple way to target everybody through social media who's at coordinates on a map. And you could do that in the Ball Harbor shops. And we could be like a, a slightly downscale alternative, and dare I say downscale, but God, if you're gonna be down, downscale, be downscale to the Ball Harbor shops. <laughs> so I don't think that's a, that's a bad marketing plan. In fact, it'd be a great use of funds. It works great, because anybody on social media can just be targeted right there. They're already parked, and they're gonna be parked in that huge garage. So there's more spots. We don't have to worry about parking for them. And the businesses are, are you know, just a slight getaway for a nice outdoor alternative that's just steps away. Um, so, the other options are, are the long and medium term plans, which are things that we are, um, you know, we already have talked about. Um, and that's why I mentioned them. So I think it's a good idea to, to is this to be the introduction for our follow up meeting. Um, Vice Mayor Paul brought, brought up the ideas for the drop off areas, um, which of course creates more parking enforcement challenges um, and more traffic in and out. And it's kind of hard to monitor if they're chalking, but just a, it's definitely a good idea. Um, and we, of, of course, want to focus on safety. And um, we can run through the memo, but um, you know, curbside pickup um, for everybody, but that's, again, have the challenges of the loading zone. Um, bicycle lanes, we already have that. We talked about how making it green is kind of expensive. That's in the, it's in the notes in another section actually quite expensive. I didn't know that green surface was, was so yep. expensive. $45 um, a foot. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh. And, um, but my, you know, my thing is like, everything needs to be planned and executed in, in consultation and alignment with, you know, regional planning, especially we have the Ball Harbor shops, like in massively increasing their, their parking and the impact, which is gonna be on traffic in this community. Um, and they actually, you know, criticized our, motion with Bay, with Bay Drive. But that's probably for some unrelated reasons, I imagine, such as, you know, uh, keeping out bad influences. Um, but, uh, and I think it's important that we integrate flow and safety of pedestrians, bicycles, public transportation, um, electric vehicles, small vehicles, the, the different um, modes of trans transportation that we're introducing, including that service on demand. Um, I, and I think that might be, be a good way to uh, segue into um, providing some parking, um, some parking pressure, um, you know, kind of solution with marketing and partnering with the garages in town that have too much space and making it very convenient for people to get from point A to B. And if you don't know what has too much space because they weren't, they didn't want to build such a huge parking garage, um, I think that I can speak for the Four Seasons. They don't use that full parking garage most of the year, it's just like about a week or two weeks of the year that it's full, the, pr the prime time. And the rest of the time is a bunch of open spaces. So it may be a way to provide backup parking um, in a convenient way for people to get back and forth around town because if it's not convenient, they're not gonna use it. Um, so 
those are the ideas, and um, and I'd like to take action tonight. So just a motion to change the parking lots back to two hour maximum during the hours of okay. uh, whatever that was previously, because we had reversed it, so we would just go back to the original two hour max. Is there a second to that? Uh, I'm just curious. When did we switch that? Because uh, I know in the prior to COVID, we had changed, we had limited the parking, so I don't, know, I didn't know it reverted. We had switched it, uh, my understanding, based on the fact that the businesses were empty and the lots were empty during COVID and we were trying to get people to be spending more time during the day. But perhaps um, we can have an answer right here. Uh, I wasn't aware of that. It was come, come on up, come on up to the microphone. Okay. That was North Jersey. It was switched back in uh, 2019, August of 2019. It was a recommendation from the DVAC committee. Oh, okay. oh, so it wasn't this committee it or this no, commission? It wasn't this, it wasn't this commission. Oh, that's my confusion. Yes. Okay. But so what, what, so what, what was it and what do you want? What is it now? It was at two hours. When? During weekdays, Monday through Friday. I mean, from it, seven what, to what is it now? It's four hours. Okay. And, and you're recommending we go to two hours? Oh, absolutely. Yes. Okay, so let's, let's do this. Let, let, again, hold on, guys. There's a motion to do that. Uh, Tina, you asked the question, but do you want to second it? Uh, well, I'm not sure. I just, I'm trying to understand it. I can't second something I don't understand. I, no, no, I don't blame you. But, but guys, guys, there's a motion, and we have to do this in order. Is there a second to that particular motion? Um, I, I think three hours would be. Okay, but that's not his motion. You, you could ask him to go to three would hours. You change it to three hours because you know what? Sometimes. Like, for example, if you're in uh, Flanagan's and they might have a long line and you're parked in the rear of Flanagan's and well, it could take you an hour just to get a table. Well, keep in mind that, that this was the way it was um, 2019 and earlier, and it's during the daytime hours up until what time? 7 to 3 o'clock it was. It was 7 to 3, to 3 p.m., 7 oh, okay. a.m. to 3 p.m. I, I think that's a good thing. So, yes. okay, so, the, so you're going to second the two hours? They would go back to four hours, no, no. correct? He's, it would go to no. down to back to two hour max, which limits the, the uh, construction workers because they're parking they there. They've got to keep coming back. They're, they have okay, to keep coming back to, to move their vehicle. But okay. it, again. But, but I don't understand. Okay, so let me just understand this. So from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m., it's two hours. Yes. And then from 7, 3 p.m., on till the next day it's, it's four, four hours. hours yes oh, okay okay yeah, but but that's not the motion that that's not the motion is is specifically tailored to between nine and three um no we would go, go back to the same seven to three seven because that's okay, the seven, seven is when okay. the hours I just, that's what i'm trying to get at seven to three two hours and then it stays the same as it is right now for everything else is that right correct okay so yeah. I, I second well, hey, that motion. Okay, good. So now we'll have discussion. Who wants to go first? Okay, we're, let's, again, folks, we're almost at the end, so let's do one minute if there's no objection to that. No objection. Go ahead. Um, I'm just, I out. just want to understand. So you want to make it, right now, I guess it's four hours between four seven hours. and three, and so in order to cut back on the construction workers that are just leaving their cars, you want to make it two hours. Yes. Okay, but then after 3 p.m., what is going to be the time allotment? Four hours. Maximum of four hours. Four hours. So people for dinner will have plenty of time to dinner. So it's just lunch and breakfast. Got to be two hours. That seems fine to me. Okay. And it's also in alignment with the beachgoers. The beachgoers don't want to move their car either during those hours of seven to three. Uh, right. Okay. Yep. So All instead right. of giving them four hours, we're giving them two hours between those times. Thank you. Next comment, anybody? Oh no, I like it. Okay, anybody else? Uh, yeah, I didn't really speak. So I just wanted to understand this better. So if, if Mr. Joseph, are you are you satisfied with this new change? Because I wasn't aware it ever changed from what we decided right. in 2019. August 2019, right. DVAC recommended that we change it to four hours. It was two hours before that. Okay, so. It did provide some solution when it was two hours. Okay, so you, so you would prefer this change, is what I'm trying to... Not prefer it, so if that's what you guys want. Yeah, What do you, what do you prefer? Mr. Joseph here. <laughs> Smart guy. <laughs> Thank you. Is this what... The commission well who makes the rules. Is this what DVAC recommended? I'm just confused. Right, I just want to be clear on where this is coming from. Yeah, where from. is it coming from? Not specifically, but DVAC recommended oh, that we explore options 
and I had done an assessment based on those conversations, um, and, um, and this is what is possible that I'm recommending, but it did not come through DVAC, which meets only every three months, and things, so therefore it's slow going okay. through DVAC. Charles, I, I have a question. Chief, you want to make a comment? One comment, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Commissioners. You may want to consider the days. I know that this has switched back and forth at times, That's okay. but we have limited weekends and holidays, different than weekdays, things of that nature. So just for your consideration. I agree with the chief, okay. yes. And, and, and by the way, so Charles, this is addressed for construction people, which would be during the weekdays, right? Now, my question is, is, when I go into a restaurant, I get a notification when my time's gonna run out and I can renew it on you my can, phone. You would have to move your vehicle no, but I'm saying so that that option would not be available. The option to renew is right. always available up to the maximum time. At the maximum time is when the vehicle needs to be removed or moved. Oh, see, I've physically. never. I don't know. Oh. See, I've never done the maximum time. I guess I understand. That's so, the point. So, so you can keep renewing up to until the maximum you hit the maximum time, and then it doesn't let you renew anymore. Correct, sir. And then you get a ticket. Okay, I think we're good. But I agree with what the chief was saying. We should definitely make a a different timing for, for the, weekends. the weekends and holidays. And so, well, I think the motion was for the work week, right? Yes, but however, the weekends, then you get beachgoers that are parked there for four hours, which is a problem, I would imagine. But we'll hear yeah, from the public speakers. I think. Okay, it, Chief, go the ahead. The way it was before, Monday through Friday was the primary problem because of construction workers, et cetera. And the businesses are just busier. Weekends, yes, we do have beachgoers, but the business district is somewhat slower, le less movement there. Okay. So it used to be weekends and holidays was the four hour consistent, and Monday through Friday was reduced to two hours at one point, then switched to four, we could reduce it back to two now. But I don't three. think the beach goers should be a problem because they're, they're um, eating at our restaurants, providing business to our business district. So I mean, okay. honestly, you wanna keep them around. So I'll amend the motion then yeah. to, to adhere to the chief's recommendations. So yes. it'll be Monday through Friday. Thank you, chief. Only with holidays and weekends exempt. Very good. Awesome. And awesome. does I the like seconder that. accept that? I accept, uh, yes, I do. All right, let's hear. Anybody <laughs> want to comment on that for one minute? You can come up and comment for one minute. My question, I'm um, Joshua Epstein, I do 17 Bay Drive. My question was about, because I know when I go to Lincoln Road, you're able to renew it, I think, past the two hours. Like, once it expires, you can renew it again. I think it would be the tire marking that, if, like, you'd have to move it in order to not get a ticket if they did mark your tire. But I think that relies on enforcement, not necessarily the, I don't know if we have apps, I think we do, but I think you do have the ability to, or once it ends, you can renew it, because it's not like something you put in your dashboard, I think. I think it's more of if you do it through the app, it's like a license plate thing. So I think you do have that, I, I don't know. I just know on Lincoln Road you do have that ability even when it only says two hours. Um, that was my question. That's interesting to look into. Thank you. Anybody else? Marianne? Marianne Marshall, 925 Collins Avenue. I was on, I still am on the DVAC committee and I was on the DVAC committee in 2019, but it, um, Mr. Joseph came in and, and explained what they wanted to do to change the hours, but it wasn't explained to us about not being able to move your car. We thought it could be renewed. I mean, I, this is the first time I found out about the chalk and everything. So they came in and they quickly explained it and asked and, and really asked us to strongly recommend it. And so, so we did, but um, I was not you know, I was not fully aware of the chalk marks. And, and who is they? Pardon? Who is they? I, Mr. The Joseph gave the presentation. Oh, okay. oh thank you. So. I just wanted to understand that. But yeah, I, I, so, I agree with the, because there is a problem with the two, with the uh, construction workers occupying our parking Because lot. It's working. It's brought up by several residents. And uh, also, the um, working on, on the avenue, there are several uh, clients that would see their times running out and, and just renew it. So that's what I'm saying, and they, they did. And I wasn't aware that yeah. that wasn't um, a workable situation. Okay, that, I would I, highly that, recommend that, that we, we'd be able to your, do that. Your comments led me to another question, okay? So let, let's go around in another minute, okay? Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, what about the people that are going there during the day to shop? 
or have something to do that's a little more than two hours. They get caught up in this, don't they? Uh, yes, they do. Uh, so, but the thinking is that they're, they're, it's a, such a small business district that actually well, I've had let me, like let me just moving then, cars. Let me make my... Oh, let, sure, sorry. So, this is when I interrupt. <laughs> I, Commissioner Velasquez hey, informed me all, off. We all, we all do it. We all do it. Um, you know, I, I thought that maybe we could have like some sort of like um, person there and, and it, we wouldn't make any money, but maybe from the tickets we could make money, but you could stick a person there and require evidence of a receipt of the, one of the shops between those hours, you know? And that way people could, you know, and if you didn't have evidence of a receipt, then there was, you know, I don't know, charge them, I, I don't know, but I think that needs some, some because I, I, I do, you don't want to catch the, the regular shoppers up in that too, because that hurts the merchants. Anybody else comment? Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Well, hang on. We we we're, we're going to go in, we're going to go in order with the commission. Then I'll get the people in the audience. Yes. Yeah. So unless you want an answer to that, because I have an answer for you. I'd like to answer first. Too. Yeah, I'd like I, to I hear just, it too. If it's a question, I know it wasn't a question, but I that was actually in that memo and something that I spoke with them about. There's no way to do it in like a digital fashion. There's no connection with the with the system, and and a way to, to voucher it because there's nothing did no digital link there, which I was shocked at because that was something that I really wanted to do. Well, did, wasn't that through the license plate? Okay, well, hold on, let's, let's get uh, Ms. Salzauer, go ahead, one minute. Okay, so I guess I want to find out from, I guess the chief or from uh, Mr. Joseph about how you implement this, because if you're saying you want a two hour maximum, it should be two hour maximum and then you gotta leave town, like leave the parking lot, not, we don't want to have to have the manpower of chalking tires and all of that. And then my second um, question is, there are some things that require more than two hours, like getting my hair done is like a four hour thing. That's why I only do it once a year. But we do have a lot of beauty parlors in town and it does take longer than two hours, unfortunately. Um, so how do we target the construction that is not, you know, the, the really, that we don't want in town, but yet not punish the, the consumers and like Lally said, the people that are coming to spend their money here. Okay. Uh um, Thank you for those comments. Chief, you want to That's why you guys get the big bucks. <laughs> That's the hard choice. Okay. Yeah, the reason, big buck. Well, wait, the big wait, wait, buck, wait, wait, yes. Wait, wait, wait. Did you want to add to that? No, the reason okay. it has changed from two hours to four hours is because that debate has been brought up before. Okay. Uh, where, oh, maybe the two hours wasn't enough. Let's say you do have lunch and then you want to go shopping a little while. Well, two hours is too short a time for that. So it was raised to the four hours. Okay, but well, now listen, I, I, think, I think it needs a little more examination. And I think we need, personally, I think we need a few more options to look at some really good ideas, Charles, maybe at the next meeting. And because I'd like to think about it, I haven't thought about it, but let's get the yeah. speakers. Well, did okay. you get to talk? No, I didn't. Right, well, okay, well, hang on, let's, let's be fair. <laughs> let's be, okay, let's be fair. So Tina, let Tina go for a minute, and then you can go for a minute, and we'll get the speakers, go ahead. Okay, so this sounds a little complicated, the two hours, four hours. Uh, what if we did three hours across the board? So it's the same for weekends, weekdays. Um, because two hours, sometimes it isn't enough time. I did have some other uh, comments for uh, Commissioner Kessel on this item. If, I mean, I don't know if we're in the middle of this motion or can I uh, address well, the... Well, listen, we're, we're trying to solve the problem, and I think if you have some ideas on that, that would well, be... Well, on this particular parking, that's what no? I'm thinking of okay. is the well, three let's, hours. Let's, let's, well, I'll, I'll change the motion, actually, to be three hours. Um, but I have a, I have okay, a wait comment. Wait, 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 Tina was going to... Tina, you still have some time. Oh, okay. Well, well, I mean, I, I just... Well, first of all, I wanted to thank Commissioner Kessel for putting forward these ideas and acknowledging my previous work in searching for solutions for the double parking issue. It's something I brought forward. Uh, uh, unfortunately, it was at the last commission meeting uh, on the previous commission, and we had sent the rec my recommendation to DVAC to evaluate, and then COVID happened, so things changed in the business district. But the idea was to have um, uh, to take two spaces on each block that would be uh, drop-off zones. And uh, I had discussed it, I believe we discussed it with the chief, and I thought even this, maybe this could be done internally between the manager and the chief. Okay. Um, so, I, I mean, I'd like to see that happen in terms of, uh, because there's no drop off, but people are allowed to drop off. Okay. So well, that's what causes the double parking. Thank you. It's allowed un under the Florida State uh, statute. I don't, I don't have that information with Nelly, me tonight. Nellie, go ahead. Okay. No, what I was, uh, the, if the issue here is the construction workers, correct? Okay. 
I mean, I remember not too long ago, I got an email from a resident and, you know, they couldn't park in, at the parking lot. And I forwarded this to uh, our town manager and to um, uh, Captain Healy. And they contacted the um, Ball Harbor Mall and mentioned to them that their um, construction workers were occupying our parking lot and to please respect that we need that space for our business district. And I believe that they have moved and we haven't had a problem with them in the past couple of weeks um, after that conversation. Can we stop the clock there for a second while I get my answer? <laughs> yes, Commissioner. We have fixed the problem temporarily. Okay. The situation with these big construction projects is different waves of construction workers come into a project. You may have electricians working for a month. Then drywall people come in, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the problem keeps to keeps rising over and over and over, depending where the project is. Immediately, Captain Healy dealt with the situation. We contacted the Bell Harbor command staff. They dealt with it. The project instructed their construction workers to not park there any longer, and the problem was resolved. However, once that project switches a little bit and new construction workers start coming in, this is a perpetual problem, and that's one project. Then the next project is another problem. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just been an ongoing issue from the minute that construction started booming in our area. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And specifically at the Ball Harbor Mall. I, I would assume that this is going to finish the moment they finish whatever they're building over there, um, and then we'll They'll hopefully no, have no, no yeah. other issue over here. Yes, exactly. until the next project. Which mm -hmm. okay. You know, when but St. Regis just, was being built uh -huh. way back, it right. was a we problem. Had the same problem. And it's just, it's a continuous okay. thing. But is there a way to just like say, we don't want construction workers from these projects to not, to park in our lot? Or because like, like Eliana said, you know, if she takes four mm -hmm. or five hours doing her hair, and I mean, the ladies that like the Nelly, acrylic nails, that stuff takes a long time too. You're, and a manicure and a pedicure. I mean, sorry, but okay. at, at those, Okay. It'll take quite a while, so I don't want to hinder residents that really want to go into the area and not okay, be well able let's, to park. Okay, well, again, we need a solution. So that, and that's the thing. We, we need a solution to a difficult problem. And we, we, I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think the idea is, is in front of us tonight. I think I'm actually going to change the motion oh, because okay, I think can it I, is. Can I go for my minute? Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Okay, thank you. Um, you know, I don't think that the solution is apparent right now, and I think that at 11 o'clock at night, it's probably not a good idea for us to try to rush this because it's going to impact people. I think we have to come up with a way to sort of figure out how to identify the construction people and how to protect our regular residents who don't want to be inconvenienced by a system that requires them to take their car out of the lot after two or three or four hours during a work day, you know. So there's got to be a better idea and what I would propose is all of us to, to reach out to the manager with our individual ideas, let him consolidate those ideas, bring them back in the manager's report next month, and maybe we can just make a decision and we get it done. That's my... Yeah. I agree. Um, I, I, I'm gonna disagree because I think that it's something that we could get done now for the three hours. It's been two hours in the past. Um, and uh, it's now four hours and it's a problem because the construction is really ramping up. It's a problem every day and we can alleviate it by doing the three hours during the same time right now. But what about the workers? The workers that are in for eight hours a day? Um, by limiting it to three hours, it, will re it, will, it may very well have the same effect as two hours because they're not gonna wanna, the, the, um, the workers, the construction workers are not no, gonna no, wanna no, return. No, 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 the workers at the businesses. Um, they already have to move, and it's very convenient for them because they're no more than a half block away. They have to move? Yes. Unless they have the And pass. certain businesses have permits, which is a whole different oh, avenue. Yes? Oh, okay. Yes. So you can identify the workers yes. with permits? In, well, that's, but that's, yep. that's different. In, in that's fact, fine. I didn't know that. If I, if, you, if I may continue, Mr. Mayor, there's one other point that's valid. Is it okay? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, the permits is something that I realized as well, and I just informed Mary Ann during the break because she didn't know either. But the businesses, the, right now, the parking uh, department makes available to our local businesses a monthly uh, pass for a, um, a rear view mirror hook. 
pass that the parking enforcement team then knows when that's there, they don't ticket that person. That's cool. All right. Now we don't want to release too many of those because then you have all the parking, all the all the employees parking permanently with free things to their friends and stuff, right? Um, so you take too many spots. So now they have to pay for that. But it's it is I think ninety dollars a month. So lo something to consider and something to mention to the town managers. We might want to reduce that or give each business a couple that they could then actually use as a kind of um, uh, parking voucher for their own clients, right? Okay. Their best customers say, oh, sir, you can use this to park free right now, which is something that is they that have to pay only, for now. Is that at the Abbott Avenue lot, or do they have to park at the 90? At the, that, I believe, is, is restricted to the, to the two large lots. Um, so they, they can't go on, 90, on uh, Harding, but they can go to, or they can't, yeah, they can't be on Harding Avenue, but they can, uh, they can of course, be in the Harding lot or the 94th Street par lot, lot. Is that correct? Wait, they can or be the on Harding. Or the passes could be anywhere. They could, the permit could be on Harding Avenue? Uh, the permits are Come up to the microphone, please. We have two, two type of permits. One for Abbott Lot, which we only release like a cup 30 per month and 94th Street Lot. But the not one, Harding Avenue? Not Harding, no. Okay. Oh, that was okay. the question. And the price is not $90 for the 94th Street lot, it's $75. Okay. All right. And then how many Thank permits you. do we have for the Abbott Avenue lot? About 32. 32? Yeah. That's 32 spots that are occupied all day? Not all day. Okay. But that's why we, we limit how many we give. Shouldn't we, we encourage them there. more to move over to the 94th 94. Street? 94, we sell about 140. Oh, okay. Okay. I'll tell you Maybe that Abbott, make Abbott that lot's getting very crowded at lunchtime. Yeah. Yep. Maybe we should put so that Abbott Avenue lot a little higher so you can keep them moving over to the to the one on um Especially the business people. Yeah. You know, the the people that work in the business district. Yeah. So that would be something to consider I think for next month, but I still think it's a good idea right now, given the situation that you know, to lower the maximum for to three hours during those times, so because it'll okay. deter some of the construction workers. Right, yeah, at least we do something I'll, for now. Okay, it, speakers on that subject. I just have a question. Yes, one minute, please. Come on up, one at a time. Joshua Epstein, ninety seventeen Bidja. My original question was about the employees, but I think if this is going to be a long term um, issue, it might be worth it to invest in. I know I was just looking it up because I know I think the 93rd Street, I don't know, the, the lot across from Publix, I think that's the lot we're talking about. There's only one way in, one way out. The way I think parking validation work with those, like you go in, you pay afterwards, so I think the businesses would then be able to stamp it to validate the parking. I don't know the exact logistics of it, but I know that Aventura Mall, do, not Aventura Mall, um, the movie theater parking lot down in Lincoln um, Road does that. So since there's a lot of traffic here, that might be something that to spend, I don't know, 50,000, however much money that will cost just to get that done. Thanks. I think Speaker with that Marianne. you have to have like an attendant And then there. Jeff. Um, having worked um, at other facilities along Harding, um, a waxing salon, um, as a, a office manager there, we had the monthly um, uh, parking at 94th Street. And at the height of the season, even the employees couldn't find parking, even though they had the passes. So mm -hmm. at some point, we really have to address it during high season because the Abbott lot fills up and the 94th just for the employees. They can't even, even though we're paying for it, they, they can't find parking. Mm -hmm. So at some point, we really do have to look at this. I mean, we didn't see it this year, obviously, but yeah. that is what happens and everybody's driving around looking for a parking space, even right. though they pay for the permit. Thank you. Right. How about at other lots, like the one Mr. right Rose. here behind us? Mm -hmm. Jeff Rose, 8851 Friday Avenue. Not to throw a curveball, um, Commissioner Kessel, you wrote in there about the other solutions, um, not to take away spots, but it's been talked about several months ago by DVAC and the Tourist Board approved widening the sidewalks and eliminating some of the parking spaces. Not, not even on the agenda. I don't know if this is a bigger picture thing, but it was in your write-up thing um, about this item, which is why I'm bringing it up. I mean, it's been approved by DVAC. They put a motion forward. The tourist board put a motion forward to do this. Not even on the agenda. I mean, 
what, what's going on here? Months. We, we got to at least get this on the agenda, talk about it, widening it. Where, where are we with this? I mean, we got to start moving things forward. I mean, we're doing a lot of talking and going in circles, but we got to start taking action. And you, the three hour thing, whole big thing, I don't disagree, but we got to start moving some of these things forward because the meeting tonight, we're on item 9B, it wasn't very productive, and there was a lot of things we talked about. I know we're trying to get under control here. I'll cut it short, but that item was talked about widening the sidewalks. It's, it was in your write-up, and it's not even on here. Your point Thank is you. well taken. I mean, it's, Thank it's you, Jeff. super frustrating. Yeah, it is. George. George Kuslis, 9225 Collins Avenue. Uh, the first, probably the most wisest thing said all evening is that nothing at 11 o'clock should ever be voted on. It's <laughs> one of the reasons why your zoning code is such a mess. Uh, Commissioner Salzauer, you know that one particular issue basically was approved at 11 at night. So I, I think it would be good to kind of let the town manager uh, tie this in a nice ribbon for the next month. Um, the reason you brought up about what can be done in two hours is precisely why DVAC uh, modified the, the time limit from two to four a couple years ago. Uh, that they, they wanted Harding Avenue to be a place where somebody could actually, it was a destination, so you could have a lunch, a nice leisure, leisurely lunch, uh, go shopping, go to a couple shops, do some stuff, get your hair done, whatever. Um, and two hours seemed a little bit tough. So that was the background to that, and you guys latched onto that pretty quickly. Um, so I think I would look at all of that and the stuff that Jeff Rose just brought up about widening the sidewalks. That's obviously going to take out some spaces. How many? It depends on how, how much you do. But I think you want to look at this whole thing. So anyway, and it's in the commissioner's report. It's just not been the main topic tonight. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, George. Thank you, George. Anybody else on that? Subject from the audience, okay, of Eliana and then Tina. Um, I had a question. So I do agree that we should spend some time having the town manager look into this. But if we're trying to target the construction workers, um, then why don't I know the, in this particular situation, it's the construction workers from Bell Harbor. So it's not our permitting, but we should use this as an example for maybe when we give construction permits for there to be mandatory, they have to provide their own parking for their people so we don't wind up in the situation when we have the Eden or whatever other project going on again. So that is a way to target construction without hurting the people that want to come here for dinner and then go get dessert and get their nails done or whatever because we do want it to be a destination. And we want people to be coming here. The other question I had is this angled parking thing. I'm not clear on how, I, widening the sidewalk sounds great. I'm just not sure if you can take the county road and make it surfside sidewalk. Like I don't, there, th that's where we need the manager and the lawyer to get together and tell us what we can and can't do legally. Um, I love the idea of angled parking. I am the worst parallel parker on earth. My son can attest to that. So angled parking would be swell. But again, I don't know what we legally can and can't do because they're not our roads. So I would love some guidance I, I from the manager. I actually know those thank, answers. Thank you. My okay. concern is the palm trees. Okay. Well, who's next? Oh. I think Vice Mayor, you were next. Go ahead. Wait a minute. Not thank you. So, um, there, there was something else that, that Commissioner Kessel had in here that I liked. I found it really interesting on page 170, the rooftop dining. Um, I think it's an interesting concept. So uh, it gets tricky because you're dealing with the landlords and the restaurants, but you know, that's something they would have to work out themselves, but I, I, I would totally be supportive of that. I think it's, I'm glad you brought that forward. And um, the other thing is that I would like to see the drop-off spots. I mean, I brought it up on the previous commission. Uh, yeah. If we had decided that night, it, it probably would have been implemented, but we sent it to DVAC, and then, you know, COVID happened. Um, but now we have the same issue of double parking. So I think it's, it's very relevant and important to, to do. Where, where do you suggest to put those, Tina? Well, I suggested to start with one side of the street. You would have to do it on, on 94th Street. You would take away two spots like in the middle the of the block. Were? Uh, no, in the middle, on Harding Avenue, in the middle of the block on 94th Street, you would take two spots, so it could be a drop-off zone, and you would do the same on 95th Street. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Um, so you're talking about uh, taking away four spots on Harding Avenue, but that would be so people could drop off, and we, you know, that would involve cooperation of DVAC, of DVAC telling the businesses that th we have these drop-off spots, people need to use it strictly for drop-off. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and, uh, wait, one more thing is that I think also uh, we lack handicapped Tina, parking on Harding Avenue. Your, your, the minute was up, so okay, we'll fine. go around. 
I mean, we're all... You, you know, it's, I'm not used to these time things. I mean, I'm used to it for the past year with you, but on the previous commission, when you have something to say that's relevant, but, but you again, say it. But again, we're trying to get the meeting under Fine. control. Okay. I'll talk for a minute, too. And I think the rooftop stuff is good. I think that's a great idea. I think that uh, widening the sidewalks and eliminating the parking on Harding Avenue on both sides of the street is a good idea. I think that probably putting a pass-through somewhere in mid-block, taking eight feet so that all those people can walk from the parking lot right out onto the sidewalk on Harding is a good idea. And I think we need to start doing that. We need to start acting on that kind of stuff. So I don't know what it would take to put in motion the widening of the sidewalks, but I, for one, would love to see a motion tonight to get that going and start that process, whatever it is, whatever that process is. There, I have 24 seconds left, and uh, we'll go around again for a minute. Don't we have a motion you, on the table oh, already? We do have a motion on the yes, table. And yes. Oh, the three? Can I answer some we, of the questions? We got, we got way off track. There, yeah, there is a motion on the table, and that's the three hours. Yeah. And we got um, three minutes left in the and, um, Yeah. And the, related to some of the concerns that were brought up just really quickly, the town does have a requirement that when there's construction here, there is off-town parking that must be required. The problem is the, the Ball Harbor shops. Um, but that doesn't mean that when the town does have construction that everyone will adhere to that. that. So that's why I think three hours at both lots, um, regardless of what time it is, is a good thing now because it's going to alleviate us a problem right now. is that the motion now. that you made a, long a while ago? Or are you changing Pardon me? it? Are you, is that the motion you made? Yeah. All the lots, three hours? Yes. Not from, from eight to three? Uh, seven to three. Seven to three? Okay. So let's, let's see if we can get... Because I changed the motion based on the feedback about the, the beauty parlors. Right, right, okay. We've had a lot of discussion. Do we want to go around again? Do we need to go around again? Go ahead. Uh, I, I think this is a great idea. I think three hours is fine. I do want to, you know, it's funny, a light bulb just went off when Tina just said that. The 10 years I was sitting here at the meetings for the prior commission, the mayor didn't have time limits on his colleagues. There wasn't a timer for that. There was a timer for the okay. public speakers. Look, look this it, is something it. we did on Zoom you know so what? we wouldn't you talk know, over each other. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. That's not pertinent to but what we're talking about. But who decided that we were going to have okay. these time limits? Again, again, we're trying to get the meeting organized so I, it works. I and know, but by what, the way, what we were actually doing really well, having a thoughtful listen, discussion listen, and conversation. We, and so we you were, started with your... Everybody was talking for a minute. And it was working until you started going off on another tangent. Because okay, there's a motion on the table. Are, are, there's a second. Undermining okay. collaborative okay. efforts. Okay, yeah, you know what? When it worked. When did you call decide the, that it was Call the question, okay. please, Madam Clerk. Mayor, just to confirm, I want to just state the, the motion on the record just to be clear. Three minutes. I have three, three, hours, three hours. Three hours. Seven to three. Three hours maximum, 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. Four hours max, 3 p.m. to 7 a.m. Monday through Friday. Holidays and weekends, four hours. Correct. Both lots. Both lots. Right. Okay. Commissioner Velasquez? Oh, co yeah. Yes. Commissioner Salazar? Yes. Commissioner Castle? Yes. Vice Mayor Paul? I, I'm just wondering why it's restricted till 3 p.m. I, I think it should go on till, till 5 or 6. Okay, but that's what we're voting right well, now. Well, okay, so no. Mayor Burkett? Yes. Mayor, the motion carries, and it's 10:59. Okay, so let's Can do I make this. Can a motion that we don't have time limits on commissioners yeah, let, talking? Okay, well let's 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 have a motion. It didn't even occur to on me. some sort of organization that allows the meetings to move forward without interruptions. That's the way we need to if do it. If you let people finish their thought, there won't be interruptions. It'll be a conversation like we just had. That mm -hmm. was actually a lovely collaborative effort talking okay. about the downtown area. Sometimes it's lovely, and sometimes it's not. But we need a pattern. We need a system. For okay. 10 years, and we there have wasn't. Robert rules. For 10 years, there was not a time limit okay. on other commissioners talking in person at a meeting. A actually, there isn't a time limit, really. You well, are. You're sitting here with your phone going, oh, time's up, Castle Next. Okay, listen, it's not worth arguing with you. Okay, is there a motion to adjourn? Can we get rid of that with a motion? I'd like to make a motion to end the meeting. Is there a motion to adjourn? I'll second no, the motion. motion to, adjourn. to adjourn. Okay, to adjourn. all those in favor say aye. 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 All right, thank you. Thanks, everybody.